Hi kids, are we live? Hi, are we live, live, live? Hi, if we are, hi guys. Am I live? Am I perfectly audible and visible to you all? Quickly let me know in the chat section. All of you, welcome to An Academy Neat English. I'm your bi biology educator Ambika Sharma and today we are going to talk about this particular unit that is reproduction. So we will be discussing the human reproduction, reproductive health and the sexual reproduction in flowering plants. But yes, we are going to focus on the most important topics today. Okay? Okay? Hello. So tell me in the chat section. Tell me in the chat section. Audible and visible properly? Yes? Okay, so this is what we are going to target and you know that it is one of the most important units bache and 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 soon soon I am going to take the marathon the marathon on human physiology yesterday I was checking the comments many students were mentioning ma'am are you going to complete the most important units ma'am are you going to complete the genetics the biotech the human reproduction the physiology definitely I will definitely I will we have just provided you the schedule for the uh, for for the next four days right will tell you, will will let you know about everything, will tell you about the next marathons as well. But as of now, you know that tomorrow Wasim sir is going to start the class 11th physical chemistry marathon. Okay. And then Shreya sir and HSP sir. And then finally, I will take marathon on the human physiology and want to see you all there in that chat, uh, in there that session. Okay. Yes, you will definitely score more than 500 plus. We'll start with the human physio. We'll cover the genetics, the plant physio. Don't worry about that. So, firstly, tell me, are you people excited for this particular session? Yes, let me know in the chat section, guys. This class is going to be very important for all of you because we are going to target the most important topics and definitely these questions, the, these topics and the question from these topics will come in your exam. But I want to see the energy in the chat section. I literally want to see the energy in the chat section and if you are new to our channel, do subscribe our channel and 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 thank you so much. Thank you so much. In less than a week, we got more than 10,000 subscribers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much from bottom of my heart. Thank you. Thank you so much for the support and I'm sure after NEET 2023 students, we will uh, definitely guide 2024 aspirants, 2025 aspirants and even many more, many more, many more. Okay. Okay. So now without wasting time, let's start the session and tell me, tell me, tell me, do you like this chapter? I think you all like this chapter. This chapter is quite easy, isn't it? This chapter is quite easy, isn't it? I have already shared the PDF with you all. Yeah, we'll, we'll try our best bache, to complete your marathons as soon as possible because later on even we need to practice the questions, na, the mock tests, the diagram based sessions, very, 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 very important things are there. Okay, so without wasting time, let's start the, let's start the session guys. So, first of all, let me tell you, see, in this particular unit, in this particular unit, you know that there is one chapter that is reproduction in organism as well. From that particular chapter, let me write it here. You all can note it down. Guys, it's important. You all can note it down. See. So you know that we have one more chapter here that is reproduction in organism and it's a very basic chapter. From this particular chapter, you just need to focus on the diagrams and whatever examples are given. Okay. Okay. Diagrams and whatever examples are given, that is what you need to focus when you talk about this particular chapter. Okay. So whenever I'll take a complete diagram based session, there we will complete this part. Now the next chapter is the human reproduction. Okay. Next chapter is what? human reproduction here in this chapter the diagrams are very important we cannot miss any of the diagram secondly male and female reproductive system diagram plus gametogenesis right so basically the spermatogenesis and oogenesis the another important topic from this part third important thing is the menstrual cycle these are the topic that you are not allowed to miss because definitely question will come okay and the last is the hormones Okay, last is the hormones. From hormones, for sure, question will be asked in the paper. Okay, okay. So, this is what we are going to target now. So, this is the first chapter that we will complete today. Okay, so take out your pen, take out your paper, whatever points are extra, I am going to tell you that and then uh, we will 
discuss the things from the NCERT. So, we will start with the trick, okay. So, the very first thing is events in reproduction. If you don't want to take a note of it, it's okay. I'll share the PDF in our Telegram group, okay. So, listen to me. You know that reproduction is a very important process. Re means again, production means to produce, right? Re means again and the production means to produce. Already existing individuals, already existing individuals, they will give birth to the next progeny. And this is a, something very important because you know that we are not, right? We are not immortal, we'll die. So, it is important that our genes should propagate, isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it? That is why reproduction is there. So, the very first thing that you people need to know is the events in reproduction. One of my students is mentioning it in the chat section. Guys, is there any issue in the video quality? Seriously, video is not clear? Seriously, video is not clear, guys? Please let me know in the chat section. My team from back end, they will check it. Just tell me in the chat section quickly, all of you. Tell me. It's clear now, it's fine. No issue is there. Not clear. Some of you are saying not clear. It's clear. Okay, fine. Events in reproduction. So, this is what we are going to start first the events in reproduction. So, there is one trick that is GIF the sip and the gop. You must be thinking, ki, ma'am, what is this? What is this gif, sip and gop? Gif, sip and gop. Gif, sip and go, uh, gop. So, write down everyone. G stands for gametogenesis. Right? This is the very first event in the reproduction, gametogenesis. Then it is the insemination. Okay? Then it is the fertilization. Okay? Write down. Then comes the cleavage then there is the implantation then comes the placentation then comes the gastrulation then comes the organogenesis and finally there will be parturition that is known as the childbirth. So, listen to me very carefully. What is the trick? Just type the trick in the chat section all of you and see number of students are too much but the likes are very less. Okay. So, do like the channel as well. Do like this video. Do subscribe our channel as well. Okay. Okay. So, gametogenesis. Just a minute. Right. So, gametogenesis, insemination, fertilization, cleavage, implantation, placentation, gastrulation, organogenesis and the parturition. Are you getting my point? So, these are the events in the reproduction. So, the very first event is, very first event is the gamete formation and you know that for that we have the reproductive organs. So, the male reproductive system and the female reproductive system, both of them are very, very, very important. Right, bache? So, when gametes will form, after that what is going to happen? The male gamete, right? The male gamete, that is sperm the sperm will be transferred inside the female genital tract, inside the female vagina and for that we use the word insemination, okay. For that we use the word insemination. So, the male gametes that is sperms with the help of male copulatory organ that is penis, it will be ejaculated within the female genital tract. After that you know that male and female gamete will fuse, right, zygote will form that is the fertilization. After that fertilization, that zygote, okay, that totipotent cell, that totipotent cell which is capable of, okay, that totipotent cell which is capable of, capable of forming a complete individual, that zygote will grow into that complete individual and you know that the divisions will be there, the cleavage and then implantation in the endometrium lining of uterus will be there. Finally, the placenta formation, germ layer formation, 
organ formation and finally the child birth will be there so these are the events in the reproduction so all of you all of you just type it in the chat section the trick for these events right that is gif sip and go right that is gif sip and go right that is gif sip and go done done okay give sip and go done bachche now come to this particular diagram that is the male reproductive system so diagram based question can be there definitely and then they can ask you about the path of the sperm right bachche so first of all just look at this diagram and specially just focus here you know that when you talk about the males right when you talk about the males primary sex organ what is the primary sex organ pair of testes isn't it primary sex organ is pair of testes why do we call testes as the primary sex organ because in the testes the gamete formation will be there and along with that the testes used to release the male sex hormone right they used to release the male sex hormone are you getting my point are you getting my point so this is the first thing so you know that the pair of testes is a male primary sex organ and they are extra abdominal right they are extra abdominal they are not present within the abdomen but they are present outside the abdomen and here in the see just look at this here in the scrotal sac are you getting my point here in the scrotal sac fine fine so where testes are present we have males are having the pair of testes and they are present in a darkly pigmented pouch like structure we call it as we call it as scrotum okay we call it as scrotum first point clear first point clear firstly just look at the diagram then i'll be explaining each and every point to you okay see testes are there then here you can see whatever see what what is visible here this is the epididymis we'll talk about the internal part of the testes as well but now just look at this diagram this is what epididymis epididymis the place where the sperms will be temporarily stored plus their maturation will occur what is the function of epididymis the place where the sperms will be temporarily stored and their maturation will occur now just look at this duck this is the vast difference right just look at it this vast difference is going to receive the secretion from this gland together they will form ejaculatory duck right they will receive the secretion from this another gland prostate gland and see finally it will open up in the in the penis in the urethra basically okay okay so this is what we need to learn the diagram first the diagram i'll explain each and every point but right now just focus on this diagram just look at this so here you can see the test the scrotum within which testes are there all these ducts then this epididymis this vas deferens right this vas deferens will coil over the urinary bladder it is receiving the secretion of the seminal vesicle together ejaculatory duct will form then they will receive the secretion from prostate then finally it will open up in the urethra this is the diagram okay so how can you divide the system what do you need to learn here note down so what do we have we have male reproductive system so we need to focus on the in three parts we need to study this i'll speed up now okay now i want to see the answers in the chat section okay i want to see the answers in the chat section quickly tell me quickly tell me so primary sex organ pair of testes male accessory duct rete testes vasa differentia then then yes epididymis vasa differentia ejaculatory duct clear when it comes to the accessory glands we have three things pair of seminal vesicle pair of seminal vesicle prostate gland which is single and then pair of bulbo urethral gland right bulbo urethral gland also known as 
copper's gland isn't it also known as copper's gland isn't it so this is what we need to study this is how we have to divide this particular topic is that clear is that clear all of you all of you so firstly let's start with this particular diagram right so the very first thing is scrotum so but we know that it is a darkly pigmented area a darkly pigmented pouch like structure see you know that in the case of humans the gestation period is of 9 months all of you know that in the case of humans the gestation period is of 9 months so initially initially you can say that up to 7 months okay up to 7 months what is going to happen these testes they are present right these testes they are present where they are still in the abdomen right initially initially in the growth period the testes are still there in the abdomen but during the 7th month of pregnancy what is going to happen during the 7 7th month of pregnancy these testes right in the case of males they will descend into okay these testes in the case of males they will descend into this pouch like structure and it is known as scrotum right so these testes just imagine these are the testes so they are going to descend here inside the scrotum and how will they descend bachche anika bachche rohit nothing himanshi soumya smaira how will it descend with the help of this canal and we used to call it as inguinal canal what we used to call it we used to call it as inguinal canal whatever i'm going to teach you that is very 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 important so you have to listen to me very carefully and i want to see more students here right more students here so do share this video right do share this video just, so just have a look here so what am i saying that in the during the 7th month of pregnancy in the case of humans these testes they will descend into the scrotum and how will they descend they will descend with the help of this canal and we used to call it as inguinal canal it is not just the testes that will come out obviously here we will have some spermated cords and all right other blood vessels are also there so what is going to happen as i said the testes they will descend into the scrotum okay the test is they will descend into the scrotum so the pair of testes is there let's say if these testes if they will not descend into scrotum can you tell me what is going to happen can you tell me what is going to happen if these testes if they will not descend into the scrotum what will happen there will be a condition then and we used to call it as crypt orchidism right crypt orchidism okay i will write out the important words only because everything is there in ncert so only important points i'm going to mention here right only important points i'll mention here okay done done so cryptorchidism is the condition if the testes are not able to descend in the scrotum but what is the need to descend the testes into the scrotum why what is the need see bachche the main function of testes is to form the sperms and here we have the cells that are known as spermatogonia you know that in the testes what do we have we have the cells that are known as spermatogonia these are the cells that are going to form the sperms so these cells are temperature sensitive just listen to me note down these points okay these cells are what they are temperature sensitive what are they they are temperature sensitive right temperature sensitive if these cells they will not get proper temperature they are not able to make the sperms okay so let's say if testes are not there in the scrotum testes are still there in the abdomen then what will happen interstitial cells are working fine interstitial cells will release the testosterone all other male characters will be there but infertility issue will be there infertility issue will be there okay so these spermatogonium cell uh, gonium which is singular spermatogonia which is plural they are what they are temperature sensitive temperature sensitive so that is why these are testes are descended here in the scrotum because scrotum will maintain the temperature 2 to 2.5 degree lower than the body temperature what that scrotum will do it maintain it maintains the temperature 2 to 2.5 degree celsius lower than the body temperature okay lower than body temperature this is this will be done by the scrot okay okay but how is it possible can you tell me how is it possible how is it possible anyone in the class do you have any idea any idea how is it possible anyone in the chat section i want to see that can you tell me how the scrotum is able to do that 
how this scrotum is able to do that guys be quick ha scrotum is going to lower down the body temperature but how but how tell me how how is it possible can you tell me datus muscle okay prior nice it's ex extra abdominal so so see uh, uh, many students are not able to answer it don't worry today you will learn ma'am hormones no hormones are not at all responsible here excellent yash bachche excellent excellent bachche because of the muscles because of the muscles two two muscles are there one is datus another is cream aster i am not going into the depth ki which one is smooth which one is skeletal but as of now because of these two muscles what is going to happen this is one muscle is there in the scrotum lining right so whenever you can say that body temperature outside temperature is uh, let's say cold conditions are there temperature is low then what will happen the scrotal muscle obviously they will contract they will bring the scrotum they will they will you know uh, fold that scrotal layer right they will bring it more closer to the pelvic cavity right right it will it will fold the skin it will fold the skin and another thing is cream aster muscle cream aster muscles are also present here so that cream aster muscles they will pull the they will pull the testicles towards the pelvic cavity so the heat will be absorbed right so the heat will be absorbed are you getting my point so when that heat will be absorbed from the pelvic cavity again again the scrotum will come to its normal position so that is how they maintain and above all one more thing is there in the skin in the scrotum it is darkly pigmented plus some sweat glands are also there right sweat glands are also there right so that sweating will also cause you know that because of that sweating the evaporation the cooling will be there the cooling will be there so that is how it is going to maintain this okay that is how it is going to maintain it these two muscles are the name the names are not there in the ncrt but still it is important so don't worry about that okay don't worry about that is that clear so that is the reason the very first thing second thing is that ha huh, this is about the muscle so this is how the scrotum is going to regulate the temperature now let's say in the ncrt if they'll ask you in the uh, final neat exam if they'll ask you ki how scrotum can regulate the temperature so at least you know muscles are responsible there okay muscles are responsible there so this point clear now come to this internal part that are known as testes but che the another trick is see in my session na you are going to get a lot of tricks theek hai so now another trick is vav all of you type this word in the chat section right type this word in the chat section vav quick 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 this is important guys be quick type this word in the chat section the word is vav right the word is vav quick 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 done wab okay now what is this wab wab is the name of the layer see tunica tunica means covering this is what you people need to remember tunica means covering what is the meaning of tunica tunica means covering now as i said the trick is wab so what is the meaning of wab all of you please have a look t tunica vaginalis this is the outermost layer it is tunica vaginalis then comes the tunica albuginea and then comes the tunica vasculosa right then comes the tunica vasculosa are you getting my point are you getting my point so these are the three layers which are going to cover this testis wala part okay these are the three layers that will cover this testis so what is the sequence of layer see the sequence of layer is from outside to the inside right outside to the inside so outermost layer is the tunica vaginalis then comes albuginea then comes vasculosa then comes vasculosa now here in the case of these testis you know that you have to consider the example of a building right let's say there is a building the building is having 250 floors right this is how you have to remember is let's say there is a building building is having the building is having the 250 floors and each floor is having okay that is how you need to remember this each floor is having 1 to 3 apartments are you getting my point each floor is having 1 to 3 apartments 1 to 3 apartments now listen to me as i said the 
testes they are having these three covering outermost is vaginalis then albuginea then vesculosa now this tunica vesculosa this covering because here in testes you will see some compartments wait here in the testes you are going to see some like this some compartments, some divisions are there in these testes, right? Some divisions are there in this testes. So these, these compartments, these compartments, we used to call it as testicular lobules. What do you, what we used to call it as? We used to call it as testicular lobules. Guys, type this word in the chat section. What we used to call it? We used to call it as, right? We used to call it as testicular lobules, right? Testicular lobules they are and these testicular lobules they are these testicular lobules they are marked with okay they are covered with the layer that is the tunica vesculosa so can i not say that the innermost layer the tunica vesculosa it is it is lining these compartments so there are 250 compartment here right there are 250 compartment here the first point clear now what is the another point what is the another point here just look at it now in each compartment Highly coiled 2 to 3 seminiferous tubules are there. Are you getting my point? Highly coiled 2 to 3 seminiferous tubules are there. Now are you able to understand this? Are you able to understand this? Yes or no? Yes or no? So what type of arrangement is there? The scrotum, the pouch like structure within which testes are there. Now when it comes to the testes, in testes there are compartments near about 250 compartments are there. Each compartment is lined with testicular lobule and in each compartment, one, two, three, highly coiled seminiferous tubules are there. So, up to this part, if everything is clear, type yes in the chat section. Type yes in the chat section. Quickly, guys. Up to this point, if everything is clear, just type yes in the chat section. Quick, quick, quick. I want to see the bombardment of yes in the chat section, guys. Speed up. Done? Very good, very good, very good. Now, just listen to me very carefully. Seminiferous tubule is not the accessory duct. It is not the accessory duct. Seminiferous tubule. Because it is itself in testis. It is the part of testis itself. So, always remember, seminiferous tubule is not the accessory duct. Seminiferous tubule is not the accessory duct. Seminiferous tubule is not the accessory duct. This is the point. Now, what is going to happen? All the all the seminiferous tubule here, all the seminiferous tubule here, bacha, they are going to join. They will form a kind of network. Right? They will join. They are going to form the form a kind of network. Are you getting my point? They will join. Okay. And they are going to form a network. And that network is known as rete testis. So, within these seminiferous tubule, the sperms will form. I will tell you how. But then, after that, sperm, uh, after that, that sperm will further go to this rete testis. So, rete testis is nothing. It is just the network. Right? It is the network. All the seminiferous tubule, they will join. They are going to form the rete testis. Clear? Clear, bacha? Now, what is going to happen next? Now, from these rete testis, you will, be, you will see one more duck many more ducts obviously. What is the name of that duct? Can you see that? So, here what do we have? Seminiferous tubule. Here what do we have? Retitestis. Next to retitestis is next to retitestis is vasa efferentia. What is it? Vasa efferentia. Vasa Efferentia. Now, that vasa efferentia, it will further pass to, right, it will further join to form epididymis. Epididymis. What will it do? It will further form epididymis. Clear, bache? Clear, bache? So, can we, can we write it like this? Okay. Right? Initially, I didn't utilize that space properly now. So, I will draw it here and will tell you about it. Okay, done. So, you can say that here you will be having that epididymis and epididymis will further form vasa differentia. It will further form vasa differentia. So, still if there is any doubt, do let me know. Do let me know. This, this, 
this sequence should be very clear to you. So rati test is vasa efferentia. Here we have epididymis, and then comes the vas difference or vasa differentia. Clear? It is also known as ductus difference. It is also known as ductus difference. So always remember the accessory ducts are starting from this particular point. Okay, the accessory ducts are starting from this particular point. Seminiferous tubule is not the part of accessory duct. Seminiferous tubule is not the part of accessory duct. Just remember this thing. So, what will be the root of root of sperms? Here in the seminiferous tubule, the sperms will form. They will go to ready testis, then to vasa efferentia, and then to epididymis. In the epididymis, temporary storage and maturation. Temporary storage and maturation now let me ask you one question let's say there is one option there is a question there is a pyq epididymis option a store sperms option b sperm maturation will occur option c both storage and maturation will occur option d option d just acting like a carrier what should be the correct answer what should be the correct answer here guys what should be the correct answer here? Tell me quickly. Tell me quickly. Quickly. I can see Anika is so fast. Very good, Anika. Uma, Adina, Guru Mitran, Anushri. Excellent, guys. Very good. Very good. Exactly. See. So, this is the complete function of this epididymis. The temporary storage and the maturation of sperm. Do you know if the sperms, they will not get stored here in the epididymis. They will not be able to move. They will be immotile then, right? They will be immotile then. Are you getting my point? They will be immotile then. So, after the sperm production, it is very important for sperms to get stored here in epididymis where they will get, uh, where they will become mature as well, okay? Okay, so uh, if I have to tell you that how, for how many days this, you know, the process of spermatogenesis will occur, you know that in the case of males, right, at puberty, this uh, sperm formation will start and it will, remain till the lifetime with age it's you can say that the sperm production it reduces otherwise otherwise in the case of male always the sperm production is there after the puberty so if i talk about the number of days so in some books you know 65 days are mentioned in some books 75 so i can say that somewhere in between 65 to 75 uh, 75 days right somewhere in between 65 to 75 days for all this sperm formation okay okay so temporarily they will be stored here and then they will be carried to the vasa differentia now see we will come to the seminiferous tubule now we will be discussing that what exactly is that seminiferous tubule okay okay so see let's take the cross section of these highly coiled Let's take the cross section of these highly coiled seminiferous tubules. So, if you will look at it, bache, here in between these tubules, see here, this is the connective tissue basically. So, here in between these tubules, you will get some cells and we used to call it as interstitial cells. What we used to call it? We used to call it as interstitial cells and these cells are also known as Leydig cells. Right, these cells are also known as Leydig cell. Right, what are they? They are the interstitial cells, and we even call them as the Leydig cells. We even call it as the Leydig cell. Now, here, when you look at the seminiferous tubule, inside obviously there will be the space we, we used to call it as lumen. Just take the example of a bamboo. Bamboo is having that walls and inside the space is hollow, right? Just like a water bottle. Okay. So that 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 space is lumen and inside what do we have? What do we have? The wall of the seminiferous tubule. But see, this is the point. This is the part where actually the spermatogenesis will occur. Right, this is the part where actually the spermatogenesis will occur. Okay, so now firstly we will talk about the male reproductive system, then we will go for the female reproductive system. So right now I am just telling you about the entire male reproductive system. Is that okay? Is that okay? Just type it in the chat section. Is that okay? All of you? All of you? Ma'am, I am getting an anxiety attack then, but you don't look at the session. Just sit calmly, have some water and go here and there. Just take a stroll. You will be fine. Okay? No need to spam here. I cannot give you any dose or something, na? Kyo ho ho ho, chhu mantar. Now you will not get the anxiety attack. So chill. No need to spam here. Guys, is that okay? Fine. So, so what is the site of the spermatogenesis? That is sperm product formation. That is the seminiferous tubule. Okay. That is the seminiferous tubule. Okay. Done. 
done so now here in this seminiferous tubule first of all the seminiferous tubule is lined with the layer and we used to call this layer as can you tell me the name of that layer can you tell me the name of that layer yes all of you can you tell me the name of that layer it is important ha huh? it is important can you just tell me the name of the layer it is the germinal epithelium it is the germinal epithelium and it is a pyq kids this layer is a cuboidal epithelium right it is cube like what is it it is cube like cuboidal epithelium it's a pyq let me tell you it's a pyq so germinal epithelium also known as cuboidal epithelium because cells are having cube like shape it's a pyq so basically the seminiferous tubule is lined with this germinal epithelium why do we call it as germinal epithelium the word here that you need to focus is germ germ which is going to like germinate it is going to form something right it is going to form something initially it was believed that this germinal epithelium it used to form the cells like in the ncert also it is mentioned ki germinal epithelium will form spermatogonia and sertoli cells i think you all know about it isn't it isn't it isn't it yes or no tell me isn't it tell me tell me tell me tell me tell me yes yes in the ncert it is mentioned now that the germinal epithelium it used to form some cells the spermatogonia the sertoli cells yeah earlier it was believed that all that cells they form from this germinal epithelium but what actually is the story actually in the embryonic stages right bachche from the yolk sac right some pgcs that is primordial germ cells uh, uh, one second precursor germ cells right yes during embryonic stages from the yolk sac some precursor germ cell they will move to the testis and in the testis they further form the germ cells okay they further form the germ cells okay but we have to follow the ncert so that is why we just need to keep it in our head that here we have a cuboidal epithelium the lining of seminiferous tubule from that we are going to get some germ cells okay so germ cells are the one which will undergo meiosis and they are going to form the gametes germ cells are the one which will undergo meiosis and 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 they will form the gametes so what you need to remember here bachche what you need to remember here that we have a layer we are calling this as germinal epithelium and this layer will form some cells so that's uh, that germ cells are basically spermatogonia spermatogonia is for plural spermatogonium is for singular okay and another cell that we will get here is sertoli cells and just write it down in the chat section or in your notes the sertoli cells they are columnar right they are columnar like this is the seminiferous tubule you are having this cuboidal epithelium and at some places you people will get such such cuboidal such such columnar irregular cells so these cells are the sertoli cells basically the one which are going to nourish the developing spermatozoa the one which are going to nourish the developing spermatozoa so here you can see one seminiferous tubule another seminiferous tubule so in between these tubule the cells which are present are interstitial cells also known as leydig cell interstitial cell also known as leydig cell so these two points clear the location of the cells clear i hope it is clear to you now bachche what is the role of these what is the role of this interstitial cell these interstitial cell they secrete male sex hormone what will they do they will secrete male sex hormone male sex hormones right androgens androgens can you name that can you name that so they are going to release the male sex hormone androgens bachche and they, these are basically the testosterone you know that testosterone and dihydrotestosterone but i will write the testosterone word here only okay testosterone or the testosterone or the dihydro testosterone testosterone or the dihydro testosterone are you getting it are you getting it yes male sex hormone androgens and you can put a note over here that these androgens they are having the steroidal nature right 
they are having the steroidal nature what do they have they are made up of steroids so you can write down these steroids these steroid hormones their receptors are in nucleus their receptors are in nucleus so don't you think that this session is a kind of complete revision hai na i am even relating the things with the with the chemical control and coordination chapter isn't it i am relating the things with the chemical control and coordination chapter so there so in this way you will be able to revise the things in a better way see whenever you are preparing for any of the competitive exam any of the competitive exam you should relate the syllabus you cannot say that that this particular chapter is in class 11th yeah this particular chapter is in class 12th no no you have to relate the biology now it should not be botany it should not be zoology it should not be class 11th it should not be class 12th now it is the biology syllabus for neat what it should be it should be the biology syllabus for neat right biology syllabus for neat this is what you need to remember so just remember these interstitial cells they are going to release the male sex hormone the androgen majorly it is testosterone along with that dihydrotestosterone is also there these hormones are steroidal in nature their receptors are nuclear intracellular nuclear receptors they are okay okay is that clear is that clear now what is the role of this testosterone this is the one which is responsible for the gamete formation these hormones are the one which will help in the formation of gametes that is sperm okay because of testosterone the secondary sexual characters in males will start the secondary sexual character in males will start are you guys okay if i will teach you the hormonal control here are you people okay if i'll start with the hormonal control here because hormonal control is the most important topic if you know the flow of that that how that particular hormone will be released you'll be able to relate it properly you'll be able to relate the entire chapter so if you want me to start that i want to see that energy in the chat section guys and yes likes like like should be more than 500 plus for my session i know you know that you know in our team there is a guy i think you all know about him isn't it isn't it in our team there is a guy wasim hai na for you he is wasim sir for, for me he is wasim only so wasim he used to annoy me hai na but he's 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 your kgf hero so for his class it should be 1000 plus but for my class it should be 500 plus and today he was teasing me he was saying me ki ha you know in my class i used to get more likes so all the girls help me out help me out He used to tease me. Ha! Huh, he is a good teacher of chemistry, but he was not able to answer the questions in biology. He was not able to answer the questions in biology. Okay. Aha! Jaydeep, I like it. Very good, Anika. Hey na? So actually, he told me. Dekha in my session, I used to get that much of like. In your session, you don't even get the likes. That's how he teased me. He teases me mostly. Mostly he used to. Thank you, Srinjan. Okay, chalo. Now focus here. Focus here. So yeah, I will discuss the assertion and reasons as well. Okay, now focus here. So testosterone, it is even responsible for the for the secondary sexual characters in male. Like you know that Adam's apple, right? After the age of puberty, in the case of boys, the voice is like something different. They don't even recognize themselves. Yo. hai na and even after that all the growth of that beard mustache pubic hair and all it will start okay it will start just remember that thing so before continuing this part na i'll tell you about the hormonal control and this hormonal control is even important for the male reproductive system even it is important for the female reproductive system it is not like that i'm picking up the topics from different different parts no not at all not at all the only thing is ki if you will understand this part then the next chapter the menstrual cycle topic the spermatogenesis oogenesis everything will be very easy that is why that is why okay okay so muskan come on fo fo focus here so you know that we have super master gland that is known as hypothalamus right we have super master gland and that super master gland is known as hypothalamus what is it it is known as hypothalamus now this hypothalamus it used to release bachcha it used to release releasing hormone which releasing hormone is there we have gnrh gnrh 
see hypothalamus used to release two types of hormone one is the releasing hormone another is the inhibitory hormone one is the releasing hormone another is the inhibitory hormone so here hypothalamus will be releasing gnrh what is this gnrh it is gonadotropin releasing hormone what is it it is gonadotropin's releasing hormone what is it gonadotropin releasing hormone and this is going to act on anterior lobe of pituitary right it will act on anterior lobe of pituitary can you tell me the another name for anterior lobe of pituitary yes everyone can you please tell me the another name of anterior lobe of pituitary we used to call it pars distalis we used to call it pars distalis and it is even the part of that adenohypophysis remember it is even the part of that adenohypophysis okay okay now in the response of this gnrh your anterior lobe of pituitary will release two hormones one is the fsh another is the lh fsh stands for follicle stimulating hormone and when it comes to the lh it stands for luteinizing hormone right the lh it stands for luteinizing right luteinizing hormone one is follicle stimulating hormone another is luteinizing hormone in the case of males this luteinizing hormone is also known as in the case of males but icsh can you tell me what is it can you tell me what is it what is this icsh it is interstitial cell stimulating hormone it is interstitial cell stimulating hormone what is it bachche it is interstitial cell stimulating hormone is that clear is that clear okay so anterior lobe of pituitary is going to release this fsh and lh that is follicle stimulating hormone and the luteinizing hormone so this follicle stimulating hormone in the case of males it will act on see fsh what is the word here fsh focus on this s bachche focus on this s so s stands for sertoli cells so this fsh is going to act on the sertoli cells and sertoli cells are going to nourish the developing spermatozoa now lh l l l you have to remember the leydig cells you have to remember the leydig cell so it will act on the leydig cell and in response to that leydig cells are going to release leydig cells are going to release testosterone which is important for the spermatogenesis so now this hormone loop is clear to you yes this entire loop is clear to you yes everyone everyone is that clear fine so sertoli cell also known as nerve cell also known as sus tentacular cell they are also known as nerve cell they are also known as sus tentacular cell okay okay so this is how it work so now you can come to this particular diagram where you can see that okay leydig cells are going to release the testosterone which is going to do what which is going to start the spermatogenesis now as i said the this layer will form two cells one is the columella the sertoli the irregular one and these are the cuboidal epithelium of the germinal uh, cuboidal epithelium of that germinal layer now watch we will talk about this spermatogenesis here we are going to discuss the male part in a flow then female part in a flow that's all okay that's all so now you can even put a title if you want the title here is spermatogenesis what is the title here the title here is spermatogenesis okay genesis means formation sperm formation it is so how this process is going to start obviously the testosterone is released okay why we used to say na puberty what is that age of puberty it is the age when reproductive organs will become functional are you getting my point it is the age when the reproductive organs will become functional right reproductive organs will become functional how all that hormones will release they will act on the gonads gonads means primary sex organs primary sex organs will become functional same as the case here so how the spermatogenesis will start here now are you able to imagine the things are you able to imagine the things what is happening basically the testosterone will be released now we have the cells that are the that 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 cells are the spermatogonia cells right yeah you can say that we have the germ cells in the case of males the germ cells firstly they will increase their number germ cells firstly they will increase their number okay priya darshini bachche they will increase their number how how a cell can increase its number firstly tell me that jaise let's say here you are having some cells these cells want to increase their number basically they want to proliferate let's say these cells are your germ cells how will they increase their number just tell me in the chat section 
tell me in the chat section how very good nilofer very good obviously when there is the proliferation it is going to be the mitosis it is going to be the mitosis isn't it isn't it so because of mitosis obviously the cell number will be increased you know it very well but we are discussing the gamete formation here and for the gamete formation definitely the one thing which is very important is the meiosis so now we have to relate so now let's say from the cell mass we are taking one diploid cell the cell is diploid initially it is diploid it is 2n this cell is your spermatogonium this cell is your spermatogonium but che when the word is gonium it is singular when the word is gonia it is plural when the word is gonium it is singular when the word is gonia it is plural so what is the word that we have here it is the spermatogonium what is it it is the spermatogonium it is diploid this is diploid now what is going to happen anjali bachche this spermatogonium will undergo the division this is the simple proliferation it is just increasing its number you people will get two types of spermatogonium type a type b type a type b so type a spermatogonium will be there type b spermatogonium will be there right type a spermatogonium will be there type b spermatogonium will be there are you getting my point are you getting my point yes or no yes or no so now this type a right it it again proliferates right what is the role of this type a what is the role of this type a it will just divide again and again when it will divide again again it will form type a and type b again this type a will divide again it will form type a and type b again this type a will divide it will form type a and type b so what is the role of this type a spermatogonium it will you know it it helps in the replenishment of the spermatogonia it will help in maintaining the number of that spermatogonia is that clear is that clear yes or no is that clear tell me tell me is that clear so what is going to happen this type a will divide again and again this type a will divide again and again so it is doing the replenishment replenishment of the spermatogonia it will act like a stock ki again and again i have to divide i have to you know make maintain a certain number i have to maintain a certain number i have to maintain a certain number isn't it isn't it isn't it now what about this type b spermatogonium ma'am why why this type b is not dividing this type b is dividing for what it is waiting for what now this type b is like here i don't like this usual thing ki oh okay, let's divide let's divide let's divide let's divide no no i want to do something different right i want to do something different they are like type b is like ki i'll undergo growth i'll grow i'll increase my size i'll increase my size i'm going to grow right this type b is saying so ki i am going to grow i will increase my size so what will it do after that it will be like ki i am deployed na i will increase my size and i am now the primary spermatocyte are you getting my point yes all of you are you getting my point are you getting my point tell me tell me tell me but it tomorrow only wasim sir classes there ma neither me nor shreya sir even uh, not even the hsp sir we are not going to take the session only uh, only wasim sir will take the session tomorrow day after tomorrow shreya sir wasim sir and after that okay okay done so type b is going to grow type b is going to grow and it will form a large cell the primary spermatocyte what will it do it will form primary spermatocyte so now what type of question can come in the neat exam they can ask you ki type b uh, sorry primary spermatocyte is it diploid or haploid it is diploid or haploid it is diploid now this primary spermatocyte is the one which will undergo meiosis bachcha and if you have any confusion in the meiosis you can check my first lecture on this particular channel where i was teaching you the cell division you people can check that session so another mcq from this particular part is nilofer sakshi kalavizi anuradha thiru right what is there ki which cell will undergo the meiosis it is the primary spermatocyte it is the primary spermatocyte and you people will get two haploid secondary spermatocyte is that clear is that clear so let's solve one more question here let's solve one more question here so if there is a 
there is a question in the paper that you have 100 primary spermatocyte so 100 prim primary spermatocyte will form how many how many secondary spermatocyte tell me tell me tell me very good exactly if 100 primary spermatocyte are there so 100 primary spermatocyte will form 200 secondary spermatocyte they will form 200 secondary spermatocyte right and secondary spermatocyte are haploid primary uh, spermatocyte is the diploid now the secondary spermatocyte will again undergo the meiosis too because meiosis used to take place in two rounds and it will result in the formation of four haploid spermated are you getting my point so it will help in the formation of four haploid spermatids it will help in the formation of four haploid spermated so after meiosis one whatever cell will form its poloidy will be ploidy will be half right half now this permitted which this permitted will further grow and they are going to form the sperms they are going to form these flagellated cells which are known as the sperms okay okay so my next question is my next question is if you are having 100 primary spermatocyte how many spermated will it form if you have 100 primary spermatocyte how many spermated they will form how many spermated they will form how many spermated they will form 100 primary spermatocyte will form 4 uh, 400 spermated means 400 sperm spermatozoa is singular sperm is plural spermatozoa is singular sperm is plural okay is that clear so they can ask you the question on the basis of that like see tell me 10 10 secondary spermatocyte will form how many spermated 10 secondary spermated spermatocyte will form how many spermated tell me 10 secondary spermatocyte will form how many spermated will form how many spermated 10 will form 20 right so the another question that they can ask you in paper is the flow right the flow it's a very 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 important question so this is the flow that you people need to remember and it should be there in your short notes okay it should be there in your short notes is that clear is that clear done so this flow should be clear the ploidy should be clear and one more thing is there i'll tell you that thing now just a minute now watch it see all these permitted now they are cytoplasmically they are having you know a continuous cytoplasmic connection they are having continuous cytoplasmic connection just you know that in the sperms once one sperm may have x chromosome another will have y one will have x another will have y take it take it so basically a continuous cytoplasmic connection will help in the transport of the things here and there okay so when you talk about the spermatids they are all related cytoplasmic connection is there and then after that they are going to form the sperm and you know that meanwhile what is happening all that processes are happening here all that processes are taking place here so you, here you can see the spermatogonia the primary spermatocyte the secondary the spermated and finally the sperm will be there so this sertoli cell this cunt this irregular irregular cell the sertoli cell is going to nourish this the sertoli cell is going to nourish it okay the sertoli cell is going to nourish it and another question that will come in the paper is spermated means circular rounded sperm means flagellated spermated to sperm conversion this is known as spermiogenesis and we even call it as spermatelliosis right it is spermiogenesis we even call it as spermatelliosis okay we can even call it as spermatelliosis okay spermated to sperm spermiogenesis or spermatelliosis is that clear is that clear now you know that sperms they are mature enough so where will they go just look at this diagram where will they go where will they go now the sperm is a mature structure where will it go obviously in the lumen obviously inside the lumen isn't it isn't it just look at this so where will it be released it will be released in the lumen and here here this this thing is known as spermiation 
okay this is known as permeation so these three words are important spermatogenesis sperm formation when it is spermiogenesis spermated to sperm spermiogenesis spermated to sperm spermiogenesis the release of sperm in the lumen of the seminiferous tubule is known as permeation it is known as permeation is that clear is that clear 110% question will come from this particular part okay 110% question will come from this particular part and the another question that can come in paper is the role of sertoli cell so as i said sertoli cells columnar in nature sertoli cells are going to nourish the developing spermatozoa along with that these sertoli cell they even release abp do you know what is the meaning of abp do you know what is the meaning of abp it is androgen binding protein what is the meaning of abp guys it is androgen binding protein see interstitial cells will release the testosterone sertoli cells will release androgen binding protein so that androgen binding protein will condense that will will concentrate that testosterone it is going to concentrate that testosterone okay it is going to concentrate that testosterone the very first thing along with that the sertoli cell they even form sperm blood barrier right means the sperm cells na the sperm cells in the case of males they are not recognized by the immune cells of the male body sperm cell in the case of males they are not recognized by the immune cells of the body because that sertoli cells are making a they are maintaining a barrier right they are going to nourish the sperm they will take the nourishment from all that blood they will they are going to give it okay so they form blood barrier right these sertoli cells they form blood barrier and these sertoli cells they even release one more hormone can you tell me the name of that hormone can you tell me the name of that hormone sertoli cells they also release one more hormone can you tell me the uh, name of that hormone please please can can you please tell me yes inhibin excellent bachche harishma inhibin right inhibin so as the name is saying inhibin so obviously it will inhibit it will give a feedback mechanism negative feedback to the pituitary stop stop fsh i don't want more fsh stop fsh i don't want more fsh so this is all about the male system okay this is all about the male system so now just look at this diagram this is what you need to remember bachcha log right so here within here all the processes are occurring the sperms will form they will go to retitestis vasi frangia then apididymis okay then epididymis from epididymis temporary storage and maturation will occur then to vas difference and then here now the next part we need to understand this diagram can you see this vas difference is coiling over this urinary bladder right now we need to understand this particular diagram because question used to come okay question used to come from this particular part as well so as i said in the case of males we have the male accessory glands as well what do we have we have the male accessory glands as well so just look at it so first is your semini vesicle seminal vesicle and which is seminal vesicle is majorly right it 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 is having 70% contribution in the formation of the in the formation of the semen okay okay so let's say this vasa difference is this vas vas difference is coming it will receive this duct from the seminal vesicle now both of them will join and they are forming the ejaculatory duct right they are forming the ejaculatory duct so we have the pair of ejaculatory duct here pair of ejaculatory duct here are you getting my point are you getting my point now obviously it will even receive even receive secretions from the single prostate gland right from the prostate gland are you getting my point and then even it will receive prostate gland uh, prostate gland is single remember it okay just remember it and then we have this small p shaped okay small p shaped bulbo urethral gland done small p shaped bulbo urethral gland so bulbo urethral gland also known as coppers gland its main function is the lubrication of penis during sexual intercourse right its main function is the lubrication of penis in the sexual intercourse okay okay it's a collection thiru it's a collection of seminiferous tubule are you getting my point so these are the three glands the one is the seminal vesicle it is in pair the single prostate gland these are the 
corpus gland also known as bulbo urethral gland and finally it will open up in urethra which is there in the penis so just look at this diagram this one okay this one so they can ask you the diagram ha huh, they can ask you to you know name the diagram and the different parts and this is the ts of the seminiferous tubule the interstitial cells are there the irregular cells are there that's all so now if you will look at the ncrt everything i think I, now everything is clear to you so see each seminiferous tubule is lined on its side by two types of cell okay the male germ cell the spermatogonia the sertoli cell male germ cell will undergo meiotic division it will form the sperm sertoli cell will provide nourishment are you getting my point so as i said leydig cell and interstitial cells are also there and i already told you about the i already told you about the about what about the hormonal control done bachche so this is the complete diagram this is the section seminiferous tubule rete testes vas afferentia this epididymis and then comes the vas deferens is that clear even we talk about the uh, even we have already discussed the layers okay okay so just look at this diagram they used to ask this in the paper itself they have marked the sertoli cell na actually it is not the sertoli cell it is the nucleus of sertoli cell this is the sertoli cell it is the complete sertoli cell it is the complete sertoli cell okay got it so primary spermatocyte the secondary the sperm and here the lumen okay so the diagram should be clear the diagram should be clear to you okay and here you know that which is sperm the sperm structure so this is the head region the neck region is also there this is the middle piece and here you have the tail so what you people need to remember here just look at it when you talk about the head region here you can see the structure this cap this cap of sperm it is known as acrosome so the very first question is which organelle is used to form the acrosome so the answer here is golgi apparatus okay golgi apparatus will form this acrosome and this acrosome is fully loaded with the sperm lysine it is having the enzymes which will help in the fertilization right like zona lysine is there okay even hyaluronidase hyaluronidase remember hyaluronidase it will break actually what happened na the cells the cells in the case of that ovum these cells are connected together by a cementing material that is hyaluronic acid hyaluronic acid used to join these cells so when we will be having this enzyme hyaluronidase it is going to break this thing right it is going to separate these cell because of that the space will be created the sperm will be able to fuse the ovum the sperm will be able to fuse the ovum and yes so zona lysine hyaluronidase corona corona what corona what is this which enzyme is there which enzyme is there corona tell me like we have the zona lysine we even call it acrosin and 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 corona radiata what corona radiata is the layer i'm talking about the enzyme i'm talking about the enzyme yes anyone that's sad corona lysine anything else corona radiase is not there corona radiase is not there corona penetrating enzyme you can call it yes bachche you will be able to understand vinod acrosin is there i told you already zona lysine i told you corona penetrating enzyme is also there definitely okay okay this is what you need to remember now you can see here here you have the nucleus so this nucleus is containing the chromatin material it is having the 23 chromosomes why because it is a haploid cell right it is the haploid cell okay okay now just look at this neck piece here can you see the centriole so in the case of sperm two centrioles are there how many centrioles are there two one is proximal and this proximal centriole will pass to the female gamete over okay this proximal centriole will pass to the female gamete okay and this distal centriole bachche it will form this this part it will form this rod like structure the exoneme and it will form that flagella in the case of male okay the distal centriole and when you look at the middle piece in the case of sperms na bachche so you will see the mitochondria they are spirally arranged okay mitochondria is the spirally arranged here and for that we use the word nebenkern we use the word nebenkern here 
what we use the word we use the word nebankan here is that clear is that clear done done so now answer few question then we'll be talking about the female part but before that see i have added this table for all of you it is having the male accessory glands the seminal vesicle see paired glandular sac like okay right so it is form it used to form near near about 60% of the volume of semen right it used to release it used to release many 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 things even the fructose which is very important for the energy of sperm prostaglandins which will help in the contraction of female uh, reproductive system so that sperms can further move okay okay so maximum composition is uh, maximum semen is contributed by the seminal vesicle okay okay so prostate gland even it forms 25% of the volume of semen it is also having glycoprotein many other enzymes are also there so here you can see here you can see ki prostate specific antigen which liquefies clotted semen is also there you know after semen that the semen it gets it gets clotted you know one annoying element is again here can you guess can you guess who's here one of the most annoying member of our team exactly you are right you want to see him exactly you are irritating trust me i'll disturb you tomorrow in your marathon for sure one 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 irritating guy and one sensible guy is also there and our senior member irritating guy yeah. you are irritating who is sensible you know. and acha who is irritating you tell me you <laughs> <laughs> okay but she's no. told guy so it's okay what's up guys all well oh my god or you want me to teach the bio now they they will start asking ki we are waiting for the marathon we are waiting, waiting for, for the, the marathon. marathon yes they are just promoting you, their marathon i am telling you <laughs> they, they they want marathon. they won't let you you know learn biology biology is something which they can do on their own yeah <laughs> Hello. Somebody is asking. That's it. That's it. You take Panga now. Cat fight two waiting, guys. Cat fight two. And Ready? and see, I'm going to fight with you now. Are you? Yeah, I am not you're, irritating. You're not supposed to decide and fight. No, 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 no. You told me that, that day, I am irritating. No, no. That day the fight just happened, and somehow somebody was there with the camera. We didn't plan uh. the fight. We are waiting. Okay, guys. Guys, carry on. Carry on. Okay. Let's catch up tomorrow okay. at eleven okay. with okay. the first okay. marathon. Okay. Leave, ma'am. टुमारो इलेवन ए एम लेट हिम शॉप ये सही बंदा है बहुत पढ़ने वाला बच्चा है यस your next level capto ha he is okay acha by the way guys one quick announcement let all your j friends know there is something happening fishy on the channel of j english i don't know what is happening but just have a look at it something killer landing is happening it looks like avengers or i don't know star wars or something read biology properly tell them let all your j friends know bye bye Yeah, ma'am is saying. Tell them to read biology. Hello, <laughs> 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 guys. Take care. Carry on. Huh? See you tomorrow. He's bad. He's bad. He's bad. <laughs> Seriously, yar. <laughs> Bye. What about my pen? Just a minute. Okay. So the semen now it gets clotted. You know, it gets clotted. okay there are enzymes for that literally there are ha huh, beep sound is there okay so you can see that you can revise it bachche and copper gland is there for the lubrication of the penis during the sexual intercourse now you have to answer few question then we will move to the next topic so answer this question very easy it is i know you all will be able to answer it yes an academy need english is with me very good So guys answer this question answer this question answer this question all of you quick 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 what should be the answer here you are right the answer here is b what is the role of the scrotum it is going to lower down the temperature lower down the temperature because that 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 is the demand of spermatogenesis okay so let's say if our body is having 35 degree celsius temperature the scrotum is going to keep it at somewhere at 33 okay like this next question these cells of the testes they secrete testosterone again a very easy question and trust me such easy questions are going to come in your neat examination so obviously we know the answer here it these are the cells of the leydig cells uh, these are the leydig cells or the interstitial cells done bachche done okay now let's 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 go let's go okay 
So, what is the another name of bulbo urethral gland? Do you know it's a PYQ? And many students in that year they were not able to answer this question because most of the time you know what happened you people don't see do you don't check what is the another name for this particular gland yeah what is the another name for this particular organ you really need to check that so when it is the bulbo urethral gland so we also call it as copper's gland we also call it as copper's gland are you getting my point are you getting my point now we will be discussing about the female reproductive system so see this is the diagram this is the diagram in the female reproductive system you know that we have evolved with the time right initially it was quadrupedal locomotion and then it became bipedal locomotion and because of that bipedal locomotion you know what happened the shape of the uterus the position of the uterus is just like this just focus here the position of the uterus is just like this jaise uh, normally only मतलब यू यू डोंट सी ट्विंस वेरी फ्रीक्वेंटली इजेंट इट यू पीपल डो नॉट सी ट्विंस वेरी फ्रीक्वेंटली इवन द थ्री बेबीज एट अ टाइम और द फोर बेबीज एट अ टाइम वाई बिकॉज आर यू ट्रस आर बॉडी इज नॉट अडेप्टेड फॉर दैट यू नो वी हैव द बाय पिडल लोकोमोशन नाउ द पोजिशन ऑफ यू ट्रस इज लाइक दिस जस्ट लुक एट इट पोजिशन ऑफ यू ट्रस इज लाइक दिस सो इट इज नॉट गोइंग टू होल्ड मोर देन वन बेबी द वेट विल इंक्रीज right the weight will increase so you can see the system here you can see this diagram here this diagram is given in ncert and definitely you can get a question on the naming of this particular diagram just look at it ovaries placed here fallopian tubes are there this part this inverted pear pear shaped sac like structure is the uterus then comes the bladder cervix rectum urethra vagina all the things are there see just look at the structure so diagram is important diagram is important yeah twin brother matlab i am not saying the twins are not possible because you but but you will not observe it very frequently right you 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 will not observe it very frequently because now our body is designed in this way just imagine if in the case of a female two to three babies will start growing just imagine it in this way i am standing like this in the uterus two to three babies are there obviously a weight will increase that will not be good that that is not good for mother that is not good for the babies as well okay okay that is the point are you getting my point are you getting my point so just look at this diagram the ovaries are here the fallopian tube so yes the very first thing that we need to know is the structure okay we really need to know what we really need to know the structure and definitely from the ncert so this diagram is also important they can ask you the question so in the case of females you know that pair of ovaries then pair of ov duct we even call it as uterine duct then comes the uterus okay cervix okay vagina then comes the external genitalia in the case of females and when it comes to the aha uh, huh. when we talk about the glands so we talk about the greater greater can you tell me the name i just forgot it can you tell me in the case of females the name of the gland the name of the gland clitoris is the part of external genitalia i v can you tell me bartholin glands right just like copper's gland it is homologous to that copper's gland bartholin gland is there you are right okay okay so this is what we need to discuss uh oh this is what we need to discuss okay so let's start with the diagram first so you people can see here you people can see here the ovary so these ovaries are connected to the uterus okay these ovaries they are connected to the uterus can you see this can you see this so they so they will be connected with the help of ovarian ligament with the help of ovarian ligament this point is very important bachche so ovaries are connected to the uterus with the help of ovarian ligament right but overall you know that uterus is placed in the pelvic cavity isn't it uterus is placed in the pelvic cavity so in the pelvic cavity obviously it should be connected to that pelvic cavity again ligaments are there again ligaments are there so you have to remember the name of the ligaments so ovaries are connected to uterus with the help of ovarian ligament but other than that there is a broad ligament okay there is a broad ligament and with the help of that broad ligament this entire system is connected to the pelvic cavity so that broad ligament is forming some fold right over this uh, female part female reproductive part and then you call it as ovarian mesoovarian right 
meso ovarium is the word for the ligaments that broad ligament it will form some folds right right we used to call it as meso ovarium is that clear everyone is that clear now look at the structure this the parts of the part the question used to come from this part the parts of ovarian duct the part of this fallopian tube so fallopian tube ov duct uterine duct is one and the same thing okay it is one and the same thing are you getting my point so just look at the structure wait let me draw it because i need to clarify something right just look at it so bachche what is happening here see it is like this ovary so near to this ovary can you see this can you see this so the first part or the closest part to the ovary is in fundibulum actually right now we are talking about the parts of fallopian tube you no doubt you study like this ki there are finger like frim, uh, fimbrae then there is the infundibulum then there is the widest part that is known as ampulla and then comes the isthmus okay then comes the isthmus isn't it isn't it that is what we study that is what we study isn't it so when you talk about the fallopian tube the fimbrae is there the infundibulum is there the ampulla is there and then comes the isthmus but bachche here you need to remember something like just imagine who oh, this is ovary just imagine this is ovary so this infundibulum is the funnel shaped part like just look at the shape of my hand just look at look at it right now this is the funnel shaped part so this funnel shaped part is holding this ovary like this this funnel shaped part is holding the ovary like this can you see this so so it is the infundibulum which is closest to ovary it is the infundibulum which is closest to ovary and it is a p y q right it is the infundibulum which is closest to ovary it is closest to ovary are you getting my point infundibulum and from this infundibulum these finger shaped fimbrae they are arising and it is the role of these fimbrae to catch the female oocyte when it will be released right secondary oocyte will be captured by these fimbrae then they will pass it to the infundibulum okay okay so it is something like that so which one is the closest part to the ovary the infundibulum the funnel shaped area now now see here further here the widest part is ampulla the widest part here is ampulla and it is the part where fertilization take place matlab it is the site of fertilization right it is the site of fertilization are you getting my point it is the part where the fertilization will take place and then comes the isthmus uh, isthmus with the help of it it is attached to the uterus okay okay so now the thing is very simple you know that if we want the fertilization to occur so the male gamete and the female gamete should be there in ampulla if we want the fertilization to occur the male gamete and the female gamete should be there in this ampulla so obviously here we should have some cells that can move this female gamete towards this ampulla so yes here the epithelium is ciliated here the ciliated columnar cells are present the ciliated epithelium is present are you getting my point the ciliated epithelium is present are you getting my point and now the next part here will be uterus okay the next part here will be uterus are you getting this oh the diagram is not good but it's okay you'll understand still you'll understand okay the next part here will be uterus are you getting my point so this inverted funnel shaped part the next part is the uterus where the implantation will occur so this is the body or this is ha this is the fundus part the body part of the uterus are you getting my point are you getting my point so egg with the help of the ciliated epithelium after fertilization it will move here will come uh, will will discuss all the points but as of now the structure is important now just look at this diagram we'll not talk about the layer now here the another point that you people need to focus see this is the uterus the inverted pear shaped structure now here the cervix but it this part is the cervix this uterus is proceeding to that cervix now this cervix can you see this it is cylindrical it is cylindrical and then that cervix is opening in the vagina can you see this diagram this is the cervix and the cervix is further opening here in the vagina can you see that can you see that 
कैन यू सी दैट सो बच्चे हेयर वट यू पीपल नीड टू रिमेंबर इज कि दिस इज द सर्विक्स बेसिकली इट इज द स्पिंक्टर मसल द एक्सटर्नल स्पिंक्टर द इंटरनल स्पिंक्टर इज देयर एक्सटर्नल स्पिंक्टर इंटरनल स्पिंक्टर इज देयर ओके एंड हेयर इन बिटवीन लाइक सी हेयर द एक्सटर्नल स्पिंक्टम ऑरिफाइस या ओपनिंग इंटरनल स्पिंक्टर ऑरिफाइस सो इन बिटवीन देयर इज द सर्विकल कैनाल इन बिटवीन दिस दिस इज द सर्विकल कैनाल what is it it is the cervical canal okay okay cervical canal and then then see next to it is the vagina so vagina is considered as homologous to what homologous to the penis penis no homologous to clitoris is homologous to penis but this vagina is considered as can you tell me vagina is considered as tell me tell me tell me quickly guys seriously i want the answer in the chat section all of you vagina is homologous to no it's not no very good abhishek theek hai that is your homework you have to tell me vagina is homologous to right i want to see the answer in the in the comment section okay i want to see the answer in the comment section okay so now just look at this diagram see the cervical canal and this vagina this vagina okay bachche together they are making the birth canal the cervical canal plus vagina together it is making the birth canal okay firstly understand the diagram together it is making the birth canal okay birth canal done bachche then ha huh, we we miss that part in the case of male reproductive system as well yes in the case of male reproductive system i didn't tell you about that na like see this is the penis so in the case of penis the upper part it is very sensitive part okay so we used to call it as glans penis and it is covered with the loose fold of skin okay it is covered with the loose fold of skin and we used to call it as foreskin okay we used to call it as foreskin or prepuce and here we have the opening that is the urethral opening not just the urethral opening but it is the yes urinogenital aperture urinogenital aperture or urinogenital meters or urinogenital opening this is what you need to remember and other thing here is that it will have three erectile tissue right three erectile tissue will be there which will get uh, the blood supply will uh, will increase when there is the sexual excitement that is what you need to remember okay that is what you need to remember is that clear so three erectile tissue are present in the male penis that is your corpus yes do you know the name still do you know the name bachche three 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 bundles of erectile tissue are there in penis very good uh, anika very good it is corpora cavernosa corpus spongiosum corpora cavernosa corpus spongiosum so it is not given in ncert but once there was a question in the aims exam that is why i am telling you okay that is why i am telling you got it got it so it is basically the the penis is having the erectile tissue so it will get excited when there is the sexual arousal that's all so now come to this part the female part that we are discussing here so first of all you just need to understand the diagram then we'll talk about the external genitalia firstly just look at it so i think this this part is clear to you now isn't it we'll talk about the ovaries we'll discuss the section of ovaries but before that let's talk about the uterus okay before that let's talk about the uterus so bachche the shape of the uterus is the shape of the uterus is inverted pear shaped structure like in the ncert the word piriform is mentioned na in the ncert the word piriform is mentioned na isn't it isn't it the word piriform is mentioned na piriform so it means that it is inverted pear shaped structure so when you talk about the uterus so uterus is also known as mother's womb okay uterus is also known as mother's womb so when we talk about the uterus in the uterus there will be the layers three layers are there the outermost is bachche perimetrium right then comes the middle one that is myometrium 
Myo means muscle. So obviously smooth muscles are present there. And the innermost is the endometrium. Okay. Innermost is what? Innermost is the endometrium. And that is glandular and secretory. What is it? It is glandular and secretory. Okay. So if it is glandular, obviously it is secretory. Glandular it is. Glandular it is. It is going to secrete the things. Okay. So this, this outermost layer, you can just mark it. Perimetrium. Middle one as myometrium, inner one as endometrium. So, it is the endometrium where the implantation will occur. Are you getting my point? It is the endometrium where implantation occur. Where implantation occur, the endometrium lining. Okay, the where the implantation will occur. And it is the endometrium which will periodically shed off. If there is no fertilization, it is the layer which will periodically shed off. Is that clear? All of you, is that clear? But how is the josh? How is the energy? Is it low or high? Is it low or high? How is the josh? How is the energy? Is it low or high? Yes? Yes? High? Low? Oh my God, why? Hi, I want to see that in the chat section and if you are new, new to our channel, please subscribe our channel. Seriously, we are really grateful the support that we got from you people. We are really, really, really grateful. But yes, we want more support because we want to guide students in the next year. Also, we want to guide the NEET 2024 aspirant, NEET 2025 aspirant and for that we really need your support. Right. So you people will get the quality content. You people will get, you know, time to time, all the updates, everything, everything possible that a student need from a teacher. Now we are going to provide it on this channel. Okay. Okay. But for that, obviously, we need your support. So that support should always be there. I want to see that energy in the chat section. Ki, okay, I'm teaching my kids and even they are listening to me very carefully. Done, bache. Thank you so much. Thank you. So we are talking about the uterus here. As I said, it is the mother's womb. It is having these three layers. So myo means muscle. Smooth muscles are there. So at the time of, you know, childbirth, these smooth muscles, they will show the rhythmic contraction and relaxation and the childbirth will be possible. Endometrium, the anterior, the innermost lining, the glandular layer, it is the part where implantation will occur. Okay, so this is also a PYQ. It is also a previous year question. Are you getting my point? It is also a previous year question. So here you can see the cervix, the internal orifice, cervical orifice, here the external, in between cervical canal and the next part here is vagina. Right, the next part, the next muscular part here is vagina and you are right, vagina is homologous to penis. Vagina is homologous to penis. It is considered like that. Okay. It is considered like that. Right, bache? So, this is about the structure of the female reproductive system. But, 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 but again, we have external genitalia. Yes. So, just look at this diagram. Okay. So, next part is the vagina here. So, vagina and cervical canal together will make the birth canal and next is the external genitalia. So, in external genitalia, bache, uh, basically the mons pubis is there. The fatty cushion, which will, which is meant for protection, right? Mons pubis, even labia majora, the skin folds. The skin folds are there. Labia majora, labia minora, and then clitoris. Clitoris is there. So clitoris is considered as the reduced penis because it is also the, it is also having the erectile tissue, and during sexual intercourse, it is the clitoris which will receive the abundant blood supply. Okay, which will receive the abundant blood supply. And now you know that the opening of vagina is known as vaginal orifice. Orifice what we use for opening. And yes, it is covered with a layer that is known as hymen. Okay, hymen. And but initially it was believed he hymen is a sign of virginity. Actually, it is not true. Right, hymen is the layer which is covering the vaginal opening and it is believed that during the first sexual intercourse, because of the ejection of the penis, it will get break. But it is not always the case. Maybe because of, you know, some activities like horse riding, cycling, yeah, any other exercise can rupture this layer, the first thing. Secondly, uh, the use of the tampons and all, even it can also rupture. Thirdly, th sometimes, you know, even this, uh, even after the sexual intercourse, this hymen remain as such. So, we cannot consider it, it is a sign of virginity, it is a myth, 
okay it is a myth okay so this is about the female reproductive system now majorly what we need to discuss we need to talk about the ovaries right we need to talk about the ovaries so first of all in the chat section all of you do let me know that ovaries the outer layer of ovaries the outer layer of ovary is known as right the outer layer of ovary is known as can you tell me the outer layer of ovary is known as anyone in the class outermost layer or even you can tell me the innermost layer guys be quick here i want to see the energy after this we will be talking about the oogenesis then all that uh, you know steps the fertilization implantation wala part and then we will talk about the developmental stages yes medulla no 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 i am talking about the layer i am talking about the covering it is not theca externa it is not just cortex and medulla no not at all zona pellucida to definitely not there yeah bachche bachche it's your homework you will check the layers of the ovary it's your homework it's your homework now just focus here see we are taking the cross section of the ovary right so you know that even the stromal tissue of the ovary even it is divided into two parts the outermost is the cortex and the innermost is the medulla what is it outermost is the cortex and the inner one is the medulla when you talk about the medulla it is the middle part having connective tissue right it is the middle part having connective tissue what is it it is the middle part having connective tissue okay it is the middle part having the connective tissue just remember so when it you talk about the cortex cortex is the actual site of oogenesis it is the part where the ovum formation will occur the oogenesis okay this oogenesis the this cortex will have that ovarian cell it will have that follicular cell the granulosa cell and here the development of ovum will occur and when you talk about the medulla bachche it is the part which will be having the abundant blood supply but we cannot say that that there is some kind of you know distinction in between cortex and medulla no it is not like that okay it is not like that and now you you are right bachche that when you talk about the ovaries the layer outside here there is tunica albuginea it is not the seminiferous tubule which is which is going to line it no doubt germinal epithelium is there right see you have to tell me the sequence that is your homework will you do it tell me will you people do it will you do it it is your homework you have to tell me the sequence of layers here i am not going to tell you now because this is bad you don't know it it is important okay dan will you do it tell me in the chat section are you going to do it ha i'll share the pdf but not right now let me finish the session first na pakka session will go till 9 now wasim sir session is not there he is going to take the marathon tomorrow na so he has to prepare for that done sure okay fine so <coughs> so now let's talk about the entire oogenesis wala part and everything okay let's discuss that Ma'am, outermost layer. No, 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 no. It is not the vulva. Vulva is the word which is used for that genitalia. It is not. So this is your homework. Okay. So now, you already know the hormonal control. You know that the females, when they will attain the age of puberty, in their case also gametes will start forming. But in the case of males and females, you know this process is bit different. In the case of males, the male gamete is sperm. So the process is spermatogenesis. In the case of, in the case of females. in the case of females the gamete is ovum and the process is oogenesis genesis means formation oogenesis ovum formation will be there ovum formation will be there so there is some difference bachche there is some difference bachche so when you talk about the oogenesis right when you talk about the oogenesis you know it starts before birth do you know that it starts before birth and it gets completed at the time of fertilization do you know that it gets completed at the time of fertilization right at the time of fertilization now this is the topic where majority of ha huh, majority of students they make mistake so we are going to discuss it in two parts okay we will be discussing this particular topic into two parts so first of all just remember the sequence the sequence is same like there will be the oogonium 
right that oogonium will grow that oogonium is going to form the primary oocyte that primary oocyte it will form secondary oocyte but along with that it is going to form the polar body i'll explain it just listen to me carefully and the secondary oocyte will divide again it will form the final ovum the ooted one more polar body and here this polar body will again divide it will form two more polar bodies okay the sequence is same but how the things will occur this is what we need to understand now okay this is what we need to understand now so are you guys ready for it are you people ready for it yes the o genesis i know many students they face problem in this particular topic but i am going to make it very easy for you i will tell you the points here right i'll tell you the points here ki these are the points from where the question can come but i want to see the energy in the chat section as well what happened to you yaar if i can teach obviously you can even learn na you can even learn we know that we do not have much time we do not have much time isn't it we have we have exam on 7th of may we need to finish a lot of a lot of a lot of syllabus is there the syllabus is vast so we need to finish it so for that obviously we have to do the extra work na we have to do the extra work okay see in the starting of the session i already told you about the hormonal control i told you that which hormone will be released and how is it going to act we will relate it here but when you talk about the oogenesis it is bit different it starts before birth so we have to we have to study accordingly right we have to study accordingly it starts before birth it starts before birth so this is the keyword this is the major point here so we can say that ki females even when a baby girl is in her mother's womb she started making her gametes isn't it she started making her gametes this is what we need to understand so let's start from the let's start from the part before birth ki what is going to happen in embryonic stages or you can say that before birth actually bachche what is happening in the ovaries we have the cells we used to call it as ovarian follicles we used to call it as ovarian follicles what we used to call it we used to call it as we used to call it as ovarian follicle right ovarian follicle right now what is happening here listen to me listen to me actually before birth there will be cells will be there you know that these are the germ cells they all form from precursor germ cells and then that germ cells germ cells germ cells what will they do what will they do obviously so many cells will form they are basically the oogonia what are they they are oogonia just remember one thing here in the case of female no oogonia will be further formed after birth they will form only in the embryonic stages no oogonia ya no primary follicle or oocyte will form after birth they will form only in the embryonic stages see i am going to divide this topic into parts before birth at the time of uh, puberty at the time of fertilization this is how i'm going to divide it okay this is how i'm going to divide it so listen to me very carefully so what is happening bachche as i said so many oogonia will be form will be there in the ovaries will be there in the ovaries right bachche now this oogonia will grow a bit it will form primary oocyte what will it do it will form primary oocyte what will it do it will form primary oocyte you know that harishma in the primary oocyte what is going to happen it is diploid it is in last cell now in the embryonic stages only this primary oocyte will start meiosis it will start meiosis but this meiosis will not be completed you know that ki meiosis one the prophase one is having five sub stages isn't it meiosis one prophase 1 is having five sub stages isn't it tell me bachcho isn't it guys i want to see the answers in the chat section tell me tell me tell me tell me in the chat section you know all the time you know wasim used to say ki see in my chat box students always respond in your chat box they do not i don't want to see it yaar in in the neat examination 90 questions will be there from the biology so show that energy and it is very easy and interesting subject the topic is very interesting it is not just for the neat exam it's a journal topic you people should know it yaar so i want to see that in the chat section and do like the video as well otherwise again that guy will come and will start fighting you see you do not have this you do not have that 
do like the video as well so now focus here so what is going to happen the primary oocyte is there right the primary oocyte is there so it will start the meiosis now in the meiosis one now in the meiosis one in the prophase one we have the five substages leptotene zygotene pachytene diplotene diakinesis leptotene zygotene pachytene diplotene diakinesis leptotene zygotene pachytene diplotene diakinesis are you getting my point are you getting my point so this meiosis will start this meiosis will start but it will remain till it will remain till diptol diplotene stage at diplotene stage there will be an there will be an arrest and we even call it as dictate stage right we even call it as dictate stage what we used to call it dictate stage what we used to call it dictate stage are you getting my point so no doubt the meiosis will start but it will remain till diplotene stage only and we used to call this arrest as diplo dictate arrest parallelly what is happening parallelly what is happening now this primary oocyte it is it will get covered you know with the ovarian cells see this is the primary oocyte now it is getting covered with some ovarian cells the follicular cells of ovary now you can call this structure as primary follicle are you getting my point because sometimes the students they don't even understand the difference in the primary oocyte and in the word primary follicle but che primary oocyte is that cell that oogonia will grow it will form primary oocyte but when we use the word primary follicle then at that time what is happening this primary oocyte is covered with the layer of cells it is covered with the ovarian cells now we are calling it as primary follicle are you getting my point now we are calling it as primary follicle when do we use the word follicle when do we use the word follicle follicle means group of cells what is the meaning of follicle it simply means group of cells group of cells so when this oocyte is covered with the group of cell then we are calling it as primary follicle so what you have to remember before birth this is the case this is the scenario okay so no further oogonium no further oocyte or no further follicle will be added after the birth this point clear because this is a pyq is it clear is it clear yes or no is it clear if it is a yes let me know in the chat section okay now at the time of birth what will happen at the time of birth what will happen see you can say that in ovaries millions of millions of oocyte are there ya millions of primary follicles are there millions of then million of follicles are there now at the time of puberty what is going to happen now at the time of puberty what is going to happen see from birth to puberty there will be the degeneration of follicles there will be the degeneration of follicles and that is known as follicular atresia that is known as follicular atresia what is it bachche that is known as follicular atresia are you getting my point are you getting my point degeneration of follicles will be there so at the time of birth sorry at the time of puberty each ovary contains 60000 to 80000 follicles right 60000 to 80000 follicles are you getting my point are you getting my point so in these follicles in the primary oocyte right basically what is there right that oocyte is in the diplotene stage that oocyte is in the diplotene stage now in the age of puberty what will happen hormonal secretion will be induced right hormonal secretion will be there so you know the loop again you know the story again the hypothalamus will release gonadotropin releasing hormone anterior lobe of pituitary will release follicle stimulating hormone and the luteinizing hormone so now see if you will listen to me for the next 10 minutes the topic of oogenesis the topic of menstrual cycle will be crystal clear to you right both the topics will be crystal clear to you so guys
आर यू रेडी येस आर यू रेडी फॉर दैट फॉर नेक्स्ट टेन मिनट्स यू नीड टू लिसन टू मी वेरी 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 केयरफुली ओके यू नीड टू लिसन टू मी वेरी 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 केयरफुली ओके डन ओके फाइन सो हॉर्मोनल सिक्रीशन हॉर्मोन सिक्रीशन विल बी देर अगेन द हाइपोथैलेमस विल रिलीज द जी एन आर एच इट विल एक्ट ऑन द एंटीरियर लोब ऑफ पिट्यूटरी विच इन रिस्पॉन्स टू दैट विल स्टार्ट रिलीजिंग एफ एस एच एन एल एच द स्टोरी इज सेम राइट द स्टोरी इज सेम नाउ वॉट दैट एफ एस एच विल डू बच्चे वॉट इज द नेम ऑफ वॉट इज द फुल फॉर्म ऑफ दिस एफ एस एच फॉलिकल स्टिमुलेटिंग हॉर्मोन ऑब्वियसली इट विल हेल्प इन द फॉलिकल प्रोलीफेरेशन obviously it will help in the follicle proliferation isn't it isn't it it will act on that follicles so you know that initially there will be a very small will a precursor kind of follicle will be there do you remember this initially it will there will be a very small follicle we used to call it as we used to call it as primordial follicle right that process is taking place inside the cortex of the ovary primordial follicle is there primordial follicle is there now this follicle will grow a bit because of the because of this fsh okay it will grow a bit right what do you understand by the growth word here the size of the follicle will increase you know more number of follicular cell will start uh, covering this primordial uh, this oocyte so here primary follicle then comes the primordial follicle then comes the primary follicle now again it will increase its size see now it will become secondary right now it will become secondary follicle secondary follicle so what is changing basically what is changing basically the follicular cells the number of cells will change the size will increase and under the influence of it is happening under the influence of follicle stimulating hormone follicle stimulating hormone is uh, it will help in you know the growth of these follicles are you getting my point now what is what is going to happen actually what is happening here just listen to me very carefully when fsh act on the follicular cells listen to me carefully this is something very important when fall fsh it acts on these follicular cells no doubt the proliferation of follicles occur no doubt the follicular genesis occur but in response to that these ovarian cells even they start releasing estrogen the female sex hormone it is right female sex hormone it is are you getting my point so in the response of this fsh in the response of this fsh in the response of this follicle stimulating hormone the ovarian cells in the response of it they will even start releasing the estrogen the female sex hormone so this estrogen will act on the breast it will act on the mammary gland it will help in its development it will act on the endometrium lining of the uterus it will help in its proliferation right it will help in its proliferation are you getting my point are you getting my point this is the thing so can i not say that ki fsh secretion is basically helpful in the secretion of the ovarian hormone estrogen can i not say that ki fsh secretion is helping in the secretion of this uh, estrogen yes it is and estrogen is the primary sex hormone it will act on the female uh, it will ha help in the development of mammary gland uh, the female breast will start developing the endometrium lining will start proliferating so that is the point okay now this a secondary follicle now you know that here this oocyte now when it is in the secondary uh, follicle stage na further the diplotene arrest because now estrogen is also there this diplotene arrest will also overcome right this diplotene arrest will also overcome are you getting my point diplotene arrest will be over, will overcome diakinases will come metaphase 1 telophase anaphase 1 telophase 1 will be there then prophase 2 all that meiosis will also continue are you getting my point are you getting my point so initially fsh will act on the follicular cells they will pro proliferate in the response of that ovarian cells are also releasing estrogen estrogen will act on the female mammary glands estrogen will act on the endometrium lining as well and in response to that what is happening the dictate arrest will overcome right bachche the meiosis will continue further and here here you will see that this oocyte see it will the ovarian cells will start forming the layers around it 
you can see and bache moreover what will happen because there is the estrogen secretion so fluid filled cavity known as antrum will form a fluid filled cavity known as antrum will form right so this antrum is having the liquor folliculi this antrum is fully loaded with the estrogen this antrum is fully loaded with the estrogen and meanwhile this oocyte is covered with the layer of granu it is covered with the granulosa layer basically it is the ovarian cells that are forming this layer right it is basically the ovarian cells that are forming this layer so up to this part is that clear up to this part everything is clear to you yes up to this part all clear yes or no yes or no but if you are hungry then with the session you people can eat or you can join later okay okay so these granulosa cell they will start arranging themselves in a layer the internal one will be the theca interna outermost will be the theca externa interna will be having that estrogen receptors as well uh, they, they will be releasing that estrogen as well and then moreover this oocyte is even covered with the zona pellucida okay okay so let me draw it here so that you will get an idea see this so just look at it okay just have a look here so obviously this ovum will have zona pellucida zona pellucida you know that it is a cellular it is without any cell it is just made up of glycoproteins it is released by ovum itself okay it is released by ovum itself okay and here the this ovum will also have its this ovum will also have its plasma membrane are you getting my point this ovum will also have its plasma membrane so in between plasma membrane and zona pellucida there is a space that is perivitelline space there is a perivitelline space okay and here in the surrounding this you know that granulosa cells will start forming theca interna and theca externa we are nothing just the layers of these follicular cells okay these are just the layer of these follicular cells but the antrum is just a fluid filled uh, cavity jaise follicular cells will uh, the fsh will act on follicular cells follicular cells will release the estrogen that estrogen will be collected in this cavity okay okay are you getting my point are you getting my point up to this part all clear sure sure now you know that this tertiary follicle will grow more and it is going to form mature follicle the graafian follicle and yes moreover one more thing is there right fsh is acting ovarian cells are releasing estrogen meanwhile the lh secretion will also increase luteinizing hormone secretion will also increase are you getting my point more the estrogen is more will be the lh more will be the lh so even the lh secretion will also increase now we will take the help from this diagram here so you can just see okay so primary follicle the secondary follicle will be there right bachche the secondary follicle will be there you can see see it here right secondary follicle will be there and then tertiary follicle look at this zona zona pellucida is covering this oocyte and then theca externa interna layers are there antrum and you know that now this mature follicle graafian follicle under the influence of luteinizing hormone it is going to release this oocyte and this oocyte is not the final egg bachche this is not the final gamete it is basically the secondary oocyte which is there in the this is the secondary oocyte which is there in the metaphase to arrest it is there in the metaphase to arrest it is there in the metaphase to arrest is that clear is that clear yes or no is that clear done done so let's continue that stages here so primary oocyte is there primary oocyte will is there so it will undergo meiosis it will undergo meiosis one this meiosis one it is unequal division okay so there will be one large haploid cell known as secondary oocyte okay and there will be one smaller cell that is the polar body so bachche maybe this polar body will get degenerated or it can survive as well okay anything can happen so next is the meiosis 2 so meiosis 2 will start but it will not be completed there will be the arrest in the metaphase 2 and i told you why it is
because not every time this oocyte is going to get the, the uh, not every time this oocyte is going to get the sperm. So, that is why it is in the metaphase 2 arrest because bache, it takes 30 ATP for one chromosome to move to the opposite poles. So, body is like yeah, I need to save the energy, I need to save the energy. So, let us let us you know let us keep the arrest in the metaphase 2 arrest, let us keep the arrest in that metaphase so that energy can get safe ok, ok, ok. So, this secondary oocyte there will be the metaphase 2 arrest and no polar body will form here. So, in the metaphase 2 arrest the secondary oocyte will be released from the ovary and it will be released under the influence of hormone LH. So, whenever there is the LH surge, whenever there is the excess of LH, excess of luteinizing hormone, right, the ovulation will occur, the release of ovum will be there, right, ovulation will occur, the release of ovum will be there and why is it so? Just see now, because LH is also there, estrogen is also increasing, so there will be a kind of pressure, because of that the follicle will break and the ovum will come out, the secondary oocyte will come out, okay, the secondary oocyte will come out, are you getting my point? the secondary oocyte will come out and the remaining structure now it will become yellowish it is known as corpus luteum right the remaining structure it will become yellowish it is the corpus luteum ok ok so can I not say that it is the LH which is breaking this follicle and the ovulation is occurring can I not say that tell me can I not say that of course it is of course it is and even this LH is again acting on the ovarian cells right. So, because of that what is happening the lutein protein will get deposited and that is why this yellow yellow colored structure will form and we used to call it as corpus luteum. We used to call it as corpus luteum. We used to call it as corpus luteum. So, bache, this corpus luteum is a temporary endocrine gland. This corpus luteum used to release the progesterone. It used to release the progesterone. Are you getting my point? Are you getting my point? it will release the progesterone ok ok. So, progesterone is the second female sex hormone it is bache, it is the pregnancy hormone it is also known as anti abortion hormone because it will act on the endometrial lining it will help in its growth endometrial fluid will be released because of this progesterone are you getting my point because of this progesterone. So, you just need to remember this diagram you can see so slowly slowly you know antrum is forming then graphene follicle then ovulation will be uh, there. So, this is not the ovum this is just the secondary oocyte in the metaphase 2 arrest and here you can see the yellowish corpus luteum. So, if there is the fertilization it will stay otherwise it will be degenerated and that structure is known as corpus albicans the whitish bodies right the whitish bodies the corpus albicans will be there. Now, we have to relate this particular topic ha, firstly just look at this diagram can you see secondary follicle may there is very small entrum then it will grow this is graphene follicle this is the oocyte this oocyte is having zona pellucida acellular layer then there comes the theca externa interna oh, and, and, and see ovarian cells are also forming the corona radiata layer then there will be one more granulosa cells are also forming this cumulus oophorus the layers are there basically. So, cumulus oophorus is nothing it is cumulus oophorus is nothing it is just the granulosa layers they are forming right granulosa layers around oocyte granulosa layers around oocyte is that clear is that clear. So, now bache let us relate this topic with the menstrual cycle then it will become very easy for you and for sure you people are going to get question from this part are you getting my point for sure you guys are going to get question from this part ok. So, see these are the pituitary hormones. So, initially FSH will release this FSH will act on the follicle. So, see the moment where FSH secretion will increase the follicle size is also getting increased and now there is the role of LH. So, LH is responsible for ovulation you know there was a study they checked it they checked it ki if there is no ovu LH no ovulation is there if there is no LH no ovulation is there no ovulation is there LH is very important and you can say that 2 to 3 days before ovulation na, all of sudden the LH it spikes its level spikes are you getting my point its, it's secretion increases. So, after that after the ovulation because this LH is acting on these ovarian cells lutein protein will be deposited the yellowish structure corpus luteum will form. So, the moment corpus luteum will form you can see earlier progesterone was very low 
but when the corpus luteum will be there the secretion of progesterone will increase and if this corpus luteum degenerate the secretion of corpus uh, the secretion of progesterone will come down and here you can see the estrogen here you can see the estrogen see initially its quantity is increasing increasing and then when corpus luteum is there even its quantity decreasing so you can relate this so these are the pituitary hormone ovarian hormone is estrogen and progesterone and you can see the changes in the follicles and the same changes are taking place in the uterus lining as well so see initially the bleeding phase is there when fsh lh estrogen progesterone all are low then slowly slowly when the secretion of estrogen will be there slowly slowly the proliferation of endometrium will be there now see when there is progesterone its thickness will increase more and when the progesterone will come down again it will degenerate so that is how they are related okay that is how they are related are you getting my point are you getting my point so what is happening if there is no fertilization menstrual phase so initial is menstrual phase it is for how many days bachche let's understand it because it will help ha we will be able to understand it in it, it is helpful to understand reproductive health wala part as well okay so menstrual phase for 3 to 5 days okay so it is also known as the bleeding phase are you getting my point it is also known as the bleeding phase done bachche second comes the proliferative phase okay proliferative phase also known as follicular phase where follicle growth is going on done bachche so it is for jaise initially for 3 to 5 days there is a menstrual phase so you can say that it is for 5 to 30 matlab total for a week this phase will stay this phase will stay then comes the ovulatory phase the day when the ovulation will occur day 14 okay day 14 but actually we cannot say that exactly it is day 14 when we assume that cycle is for you know on an average it is for 28 or 29 days so when we assume that the menstrual cycle is for 28 days then we consider all that parts okay okay so in reality we consider it like this ki we can say plus 2 minus 2 or for ovulation we can say that plus 2 minus 2 this is the thing that we consider and then finally comes the bachche luteal phase also known as secretory phase and it will be from day 15 to 28 are you getting my point are you getting my point done 15 to 28 so they can ask you the number of days ki bleeding phase will stay for how many days ya yeah, follicular phase will stay for how many days ya yeah, uh, your uh, this what we used to call it the luteal phase will stay for how many days so these are the points that we need to remember okay these are the points that we need to remember is that clear is that clear done sure sure are you sure done so this is how we need to relate it okay this is how we need to relate it so if there is no fertilization obviously again the bleeding will occur there is a periodic shed off of endometrium lining done bachche so anything else that you need to remember here no that's fine you just need to check the hormones and their secretion okay so next is bachche secondary sexual organ in the case of female that is the mammary gland so here you can see the nipple they are covered with a dark area areola here right so inside it is just the fat so estrogen is going to help basically estrogen is responsible for their growth and at that and at the time of pregnancy along with estrogen progesterone will also play a role in the enlargement of the mammary glands okay okay done bachche so here in this particular topic what we need to remember exactly we need to remember the sequence like see mammary glands they are modified sweat glands do you know that they are modified sweat glands do you know that yes do you know that they are modified sweat glands they are functional in the case of females and in the case of males they do not play any role but in the case of males because of hormonal imbalance there can be one condition that is known as gynecomastia right it is in the case of males so in gynecomastia in the case of males the mammary glands will start increasing their size okay they will start 
developing. They are not function. They will not become functional, but they will develop in size. Gynecomastia, right? It is because of the hormonal imbalance. Is that clear? It is because of the hormonal imbalance. So here, what you people need to remember, you can just see this. Ki mammary glands are paired structure. They contain glandular tissue. Glandular means secretory, of course, and they are having the variable amount of fat, bache. So glandular tissue is divided into 15 to 20 mammary lobes, right? 15 to 20 mammary lobes like this. You know that. And these lobes, they contain the cluster of cells. We used to call it alveoli. So 15 to 20 cluster of cells, the alveoli used to be there. Are you getting my point? So 15 to 20 mammary lobes are there. 15 to 20 mammary lobes are there. Are you getting my point? Right, bache? So they contain cluster of cells. They are known as alveoli. These are the cells which are going to secrete milk. They will produce milk under the influence of hormone prolactin. Remember this. During pregnancy, when prolactin will be released by anterior lobe of pituitary, it will act on these alveoli and they will secrete the milk. Along with prolactin, progesterone also help, but prolactin is the main hormone. Prolactin, pro means production. Pro means production, lactin related to the milk production. Okay, so which hormone is responsible for milk production? A direct PYQ of NEET exam. Can you tell me? Can you tell me the answer in the chat section? Yes, all of you. All of you, it is the prolactin, you are right, it is the prolactin. Priya Bache, it will help in the growth of that fat, na Bache, prolactin. So production prolactin released by anterior lobe of pituitary. So prolactin will act on the uh, alveoli cells, milk will be secreted, okay. Okay, it will be stored in the cavities there. And, but one more thing is there. Remember oxytocin. Do you remember oxytocin? So, O means out. So, it is the hormone which is responsible for the milk ejection. Right? It is the hormone which is responsible for the milk ejection. Are you getting it? For the milk ejection. So, as I said, cluster of alveoli, they will form the mammary lobes. 15 to 20 mammary lobes are there. These alveoli, they will further open into the mammary tubules. Like this is the lobes. Lobes will further open in mammary tubules. Are you getting it? Into mammary tubules. So, tubules of each lobe, they will join to form mammary duct. Like see, you have different, different lobes. They will join. They will form the duct. So, there will be so many ducts. There will be so many ducts. And then later on, what will happen? Later on, what will happen? These ducts join to form the wider mammary ampulla, which is connected to the lactiferous duct through which milk is sucked out. So, whenever the baby will give the suckling stimulus from the posterior lobe of pituitary, the oxytocin will be released. Right? Oxytocin will be released. Okay, Mira Bacha? Oxytocin is the hormone produced by hypothalamus stored in posterior lobe of pituitary. So, whenever the baby will give the suckling stimulus, the oxytocin will be released and it will help in the milk ejection. It will help in the milk ejection. Okay? Okay? Clear? Clear? So, how, how can we remember this? So, initially, mammary lobes 15 to 20. Mammary lobes, lobes are going to form the, lobes are going to form the, can you tell me, what will that lobes form? Tibules, then ducts, right, tibules, then ducts, just a minute, tibules, then ducts, then one more tube is there and then finally the lectiferous duct, ah, ampulla, And then the lactiferous duct will be there. Okay, the then the lactiferous duct will be there. Just look at this. Okay, so this is what we need to mark. Mammary lobes, right? Alveoli. So they are made up of alveoli. Then they are forming the mammary tubules. Tubules will form the mammary duct. Mammary duct will form ampulla, and then the lactiferous duct. Okay, okay. This is what we need to remember. Okay. So how can we remember it? Uh oh, memory ampulla. Done?
सो अप टू दिस पार्ट ऑल क्लियर जाहिर एंड गेमर्स प्लीज डू नॉट स्पैम हियर इट्स अ रिक्वेस्ट प्लीज डू नॉट स्पैम हियर मैम आई हैव अ डाउट हाउ प्रोलेक्टिन वर्क विल बच्चे प्रोलेक्टिन विल बी वर्किंग एट द टाइम ऑफ प्रेगनेंसी मिल्क प्रोडक्शन इज ओनली देयर एट द टाइम ऑफ प्रेगनेंसी आफ्टर द चाइल्ड बर्थ आफ्टर द पार्चुरेशन लेक्टेशन स्टार्ट ना सो प्रोलेक्टिन विल हेल्प देयर ओके आने का दैट्स वेरी गुड ओके ओके सो मेमोरी लोब्स ट्रिब्यूल्स मेमोरी डक दैट विल फॉर्म मेमोरी एम्प्यूला विच विल यू नो फनल शेप स्ट्रक्चर एंड फाइनली वन लेक्टी फैरस डक इज देर राइट सो सो मेनी ट्रिब्यूल्स सो मेनी डक्स एंड देन ऑल द डक्स विल ज्वाइन टू फॉर्म मेमोरी एम्प्यूला विच विल फर्दर ज्वाइन टू फॉर्म द लेक्टी फैरस डक इज दैट क्लियर इज दैट क्लियर श्योर येस बच्चे ने लो फॉर डन सो एनी डाउट हियर any doubt here so can we call it ltd can we say that it is ltd ampulla lecti can we say that it is ltd ampulla lecti ltd ampulla lecti mammary lobes mammary tubules mammary ducts mammary ampulla and finally the one lectiferous duct single lectiferous duct will be there which will take the milk out Then LTD ampulla lecti. LTD ampulla lecti. Is that clear? Is that clear? Done, bache. So now answer the questions, and then the next part will be there. Yes. Answer the question quick. Answer the question quick. Okay. so menstrual flow occurs due to the lack of menstrual flow occurs due to the lack of exactly so when there is no progesterone obviously the endometrium lining will shed off actually bache what is happening now if there is fertilization just remember that if there is fertilization remember it see you know that fertilization will take place in ampulla ओके इन द एम्प्यूला जाइगोट विल फॉर्म जस्ट लिसन टू मी वेरी केयरफुली इन द एम्प्यूला जाइगोट विल फॉर्म देन द सिलेटेड सेल्स विल टेक दैट जाइगोट टूवर्ड्स द यूट्रस ओके टूवर्ड्स द यूट्रस यू कैन से दैट दिस प्रोसेस इज गोइंग टू टेक दिस प्रोसेस विल अकर आफ्टर द फाइव टू सेवन डेज ऑफ फर्टिलाइजेशन ओके आफ्टर फाइव टू सेवन डेज ऑफ फर्टिलाइजेशन यू नो जाइगोट विल रीच देयर इन यूट्रस actually when you talk about the mammalian cleavage it is the slowest cleavage in the starting of the class if you remember i gave you one trick and that trick is give the sip and the gop right i gave you one trick and that trick is give sip and gop you know that if fertilization will occur the zygote is going to form and that zygote will undergo the division it will undergo the cleavage okay it will undergo the cleavage okay so bache zygote when it will divide when the cleavage will occur it is the slowest cleavage like mammalian cleavage is the slowest cleavage of animal kingdom you can note it down mammalian cleavage is the slowest cleavage of the animal kingdom you can say that that after see this is the zygote so near about after 30 hours okay near about after 30 hours first division will occur then the blastomeres will form Are you getting my point? So, what is the difference in between cleavage and mitosis? Do you have any idea? Why do we use the word cleavage here? Why can't we use the word mitosis here? Can you tell me? Why are we using the word cleavage here? Why can't we use the word mitosis here? Can you tell me, guys? Can you tell me? Because in the case of cleavage, there is no gap phase. There will be the synthesis phase, but there is no gap phase. G one, G two is absent. So, because of that, cytoplasmic growth will not be there. Only the synthesis phase is there. right only the synthesis phase is there so ultimately what is happening the zygote will divide two blastomeres will form but the size of overall size will not increase even again it will divide overall size will in not increase so for initial few initial few divisions the size of the zygote will not increase you can say that up to 12 division the size of the zygote will not increase after that later on it is going to increase are you getting my point so as i said the zygote will form it will move to the uterus the ciliated epithelium is going to take it to the uterus so this process is going to take near about 5 to 7 days let's say after 5 days of right damianthi janu jahir 
जहीर हेलो लक्ष्मी गाइज आर यू गेटिंग इट आर यू गेटिंग इट जहीर वैक्टमान आर यू पीपल गेटिंग इट जस्ट इमेजिन आफ्टर सेवन डेज ऑफ फर्टिलाइजेशन देन इम्प्लांटेशन इज अबाउट टू अकर सो जस्ट आफ्टर द फाइव डेज जस्ट आफ्टर द फाइव डेज ऑफ फर्टिलाइजेशन द जाइगोट विल रीच टू द यूट्रस राइट सो नाउ यू नो दैट जाइगोट नीड्स द नरिशमेंट एंड स्टिल एंड रिमेंबर स्टिल इट इज कवर्ड विद जोना पेल्यूसडा इट इज इट इज स्टिल कवर्ड विद जोना पेल्यूसडा इट इज स्टिल कवर्ड विद जोना पेल्यूसडा ओके सो इट विल रीच इन द यूट्रस इट विल टेक नरिशमेंट फ्रॉम दैट एंडोमेट्रियल मिल्क इट विल टेक नरिशमेंट फ्रॉम द सिक्रीशन ऑफ एंडोमेट्रियम देन देन स्लोली स्लोली इट विल डीपली इम्बैडेड इट विल गेट इम्बैडेड इन द एंडोमेट्रियम लाइन सो आफ्टर सेवन डेज ऑफ फर्टिलाइजेशन इम्प्लांटेशन विल अकर डू यू नो दैट इम्प्लांटेशन विल अकर आफ्टर सेवन डेज ऑफ फर्टिलाइजेशन आफ्टर सेवन डेज ऑफ फर्टिलाइजेशन इम्प्लांटेशन विल अकर एंड यू नो हाउ बिकॉज हियर you know these cells because slowly 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 division is occurring na as the division proceed like zygote will be there that zygote is going to form morula you know that right 8 to 16 cell stage then there will be the blastula 16 to 32 cell stage then there will be the blastocyst okay i'm covering this topic here only i'll tell you about the acrosome reaction wala part as well but i'm covering this topic here only with the help of this question so that you will get an idea that what exactly is happening so basically blastocyst will form so how that blastocyst will form c cyst means c c c remember focus on the word c so here in the blastocyst there will be a cavity known as blastocoel and cells are going to arrange themselves like this outermost layer is going to be the trophoblast layer it is going to be the trophoblast layer and here this part is going to form the inner cell mass this is important thing bachche this part is going to form the inner cell mass and it will form future embryo okay so this question can be asked in your neat examination this question can be asked in your neat examination and still still it is covered with zona pellucida so with time what is going to happen just you can say that after 5 or 6 days of fertilization these trophoblast layer will start releasing proteolytic enzyme it will start releasing proteolytic enzyme slowly slowly see the word is proteolytic lytic means breakdown proteo means protein so it will start breaking down the proteins so slowly slowly it will break these zona pellucida then obviously slowly slowly it will start eating the cells of endometrium and it will get embedded in the endometrium are you getting my point then the implantation will occur then the implantation will occur this is how it works right this is how it works are you getting my point so remember the why why after the fertilization still zona pellucida is covering this zygote do you know do you know why because it prevents ectopic pregnancy right it prevents ectopic pregnancy okay okay this zona pellucida this zona pellucida will not allow the zygote to get implanted anywhere it will be like ki mr zygote please be implanted in the endometrium lining only okay endometrium lining only and the moment when when this implantation occurs na because now there will be no zona pellucida just assume ki now there is no zona pellucida and the implantation has been done right implantation has been done so after that you know what is going to happen hcg will form human chorionic gonadotropin will form human chorionic gonadotropin will form and it will send a signal to that corpus luteum ki brother implantation is done no need to get degenerated keep releasing progesterone okay keep releasing progesterone so this is the entire story you must be thinking ma'am you didn't tell us about the acrosome reaction and all that topic is very simple we are going to cater the most important topics so that topic is very simple the sperm will reach with the help of all that prostaglandins and all it will find its way you know that the acrosomal content will be released the zona lysin is there so slowly slowly that hyaluronidase will penetrate the corona radiata then the zona lysin will dissolve that zona pellucida because zona pellucida is the layer which will have the receptors 
okay it will bind with the sperm layer and all the content like nucleus the centriole will pass and before that the most important thing is that in the female vagina in the female genital tract the sperm will get charged we used to call it capacitation right we used to call it capacitation okay we used to call it capacitation the charging of sperm where sperm you know sperm is covered with all that extra proteins they will shed off the cholesterol layer will get uh, the cholesterol will be removed the receptors which are present over the sperm they will get exposed so that receptors are going to bind with the zona pellucida so the charging is very important capacitation is very important and calcium ions are very important for fertilization calcium ions are very important for that uh, this uh, whole process are you getting my point so right now why am i telling you this story first the reason is you need to know that after fertilization after 7 days of fertilization all that zygote and all will reach there in the uterus it will get implanted so when when it will get implanted human chorionic gonadotropin will start forming it will send a with the help of blood it will reach to the ovaries corpus luteum will get it kya re human chorionic gonadotropin is there human chorionic gonadotropin is there means pregnancy occurs fertilization has been done now i cannot get degenerated and you know in the pregnancy in the initial 3 months in the first trimester corpus luteum should be there because it will maintain the progesterone line level progesterone will maintain the endometrium lining okay so till placentation we need the corpus luteum otherwise a washing will occur otherwise this pregnancy will not occur are you getting my point so hcg will tell corpus luteum that you keep releasing progesterone you keep releasing estrogen it is important so that is how the pregnancy will be maintained so in the paper there is a question of which hormone will only release during pregnancy hcg is one of them hcg is one of them gayatri in the pregnancy test you know uh, there are dif different different test kits na so in that female used to put the drop of urine and they check whether she is pregnant or not how is it possible with the help of in the urine or in the blood the presence of human chorionic gonadotropin right the human chorionic gonadotropin it indicates it indicates that yes pregnancy occurs okay so that is how this process occurs okay bachche chalo we'll practice all the questions together so you can see you can have a look of this or then later on see this is how the stages will develop finally the blastocyst will get implanted i told you how will it so this point is very important that that in the blastocyst which part will form the embryo your inner cell mass will form the embryo and this is the trophoblast layer which will help in the implantation okay bachche which will help in the implantation so this is what you need to remember slowly slowly further growth will occur since it your trophoblast cryptotrophoblast will form slowly slowly the layers ectoderm mesoderm endoderm will form so i will not go in the depth of that right bachche that is very simple simple theory is there yes one more point that you need to remember here is ha the ha inner cell mass is going to form the future embryo and one more point that you need to remember here is there will be some extra embryonic membranes right there will be some extra embryonic membranes like uh, chorion amnion yolk sac okay allantois is there so in the case of embryo it is the chorion right it is the chorion chorion that will help in placenta formation like in the case of mother you know na placenta in the case of mother the endometrium lining the decidual cells of endometrium and in the from the fetus the chorionic villi they will come closer they will form that intimate connection and the things will get exchanged this is how the placenta forms right this is how the placenta forms okay this is how the placenta is going to form are you getting my point are you getting my point so this is another important question that you need to remember that from the uh, fetus side this is the chorion or you can say that chorionic villi and from the mother side it is the cells of the endometrium like decidua will be there decidua decidua will be there so they are going to form that intimate connection they are going to form the placenta by which all that segments will be uh, you can say that all that diffusion will occur and the nourishment will be provided so once the placenta form then we do not need that corpus luteum right then we do not need that corpus luteum because placenta will keep releasing the hormones important okay the hormones important so that is how the pregnancy will occur so you really need to know the sequence you should know the sequence so see this is a very important question that placenta also act as endocrine tissue yes it form hormones like hcg 
ह्यूमन प्लासेंटल लेक्टोजन इट इज ऑल्सो नोन एज ह्यूमन कोरियोनिक सोमैटोट्रॉफिन इट इज ऑल्सो नोन एज ह्यूमन कोरियोनिक सोमैटोट्रॉफिन राइट बच्चे द एस्ट्रोजन प्रोजेस्टिन एंड ईवन द रिलैक्सिन विल ऑल्सो बी सीक्रेटेड बाय द ओवरी इन द लेटर फेज ऑफ प्रेगनेंसी रिलैक्सिन इज रिलीज बाय ओवरी सो बच्चे यू हैव टू रिमेंबर दैट रिलैक्सिन इज रिलीज बाय ओवरी बट नॉट बाय राइट इट इज रिलीज बाय ओवरी बट नॉट बाय प्लासेंटा डन बच्चे सो योर एच सी जी एच पी एल रिलैक्सिन they produced only during pregnancy one mcq we even practiced it in most predicted paper right bachche right so prolactin will help in the milk production later after the child birth fine bachche plant physiology we will also discuss but but i don't think that you guys are having that retention see in human physiology seven chapters are there in plant physiology four five chapters are there so you have to sit for that much of time right i am going to take one marathon in which we will discuss the human physiology so i'll plan the same marathon for plant physiology for genetics as well genetics and evolution as well right right but for that you need to be with me na you need to be with me even for ecology and biotech as well so for that i need your support your energy should be high after two hours you people start crying ma'am done ma'am we cannot go for the session ma'am we are angry ma'am this ma'am that you people start crying i can to even teach till 12 ha huh? so you have to cooperate first na ha huh, you want quality content you want to qualify the neat exam and you you want me to complete the syllabus in one hour it is not possible and if any teacher used to claim na ki i am going to complete this particular unit in one hour they are only going to teach you the important topics and if you want to understand something from such type of sessions you should you should have that previous knowledge right you should have that previous knowledge so it is just a click bait that in one hour i'll cover this topic no no you can only cover the important important things you can only teach that students uh, those who have already done you know those who know about that chapter already okay so i can teach but what about you people ha huh, ma'am we promise you in the last class students promised me ki we will mention hashtag that much questions done from pedigree hashtag that much question done from this topic you didn't mention that i don't trust you people i don't trust you people ha huh, i'll i'll take marathon tomorrow it's wasim sir's marathon then shreyas sir and hsp sir and then i'll come with the human physiology with the most important human physiology topics okay okay so now just revise it the outermost layer is ecto the middle is meso and the innermost is endo and these layers are going to form the organs okay okay so another important point the, the question come from this part which is from this paragraph and yes that's your homework and that you really need to do because question will come from this part this is your homework see human pregnancy last 9 month you know that you have to tell the gestation period of dogs elephants and cats in the chat section for humans it is 9 months na 36 or 38 weeks so what is for dogs elephants and cats this is your homework okay this is your homework done done so another important question from this chapter is ki in human beings after 1 month of pregnancy the embryo's heart is formed it is it is important bachche after 1 month of pregnancy see there are three trimester 0 to 3 month first trimester means 12 weeks fourth fifth sixth month second trimester means 24 weeks and the next seventh eighth ninth month is the third trimester right you know that uh, mtp that is medical termination of pregnancy is legal right in india it is legal okay bachche so initially for first trimester it is safe to abort the child if a female wants to any reason can be there like uh, maybe female is not ready for the pregnancy maybe some defect is there in the baby maybe pregnancy is not good for mother and the baby many reasons are there right so mtp is legal in the in our country okay mtp is legal in our country so till first trimester it is safe to abort a baby right with the help of a medicine itself it uh, one can abort the baby because initially the skeleton is cartilaginous only the bony skeleton is not yet formed but in the second trimester if you know required then we can go for the abortion but then it is bit risky it is bit risky then at that time the two doctors need to sign the paper okay two doctors need to sign the paper 
ओके बट फॉर इनिशियल फर्स्ट ट्राइमेस्टर इट इज क्वाइट सेफ इवन इट इज अ पी वाई क्यू सो नाउ जस्ट लुक एट इट द फर्स्ट साइन ऑफ ग्रोइंग फीटर्स मे बी नोटिस बाय लिसनिंग टू द हार्ट साउंड मीन्स इन द केस ऑफ फीमेल्स वेन दे आर प्रेगनेंट डॉक्टर्स बेसिकली दे चेक द हार्ट बीट हार्ट बीट दे एक्सपेक्टेड इन द इन द टेंथ वीक और समटाइम्स इन द इलेवेंथ वीक सो हेयर यू कैन सी इन ह्यूमन बी आफ्टर वन मंथ ऑफ प्रेगनेंसी इवन यू कैन मैंशन आफ्टर फोर्थ वीक और फिफ्थ वीक The word is fifth week, one month. Do not get confused. Three months means one trimester. One trimester means twelve weeks. Okay. So first sign of growing fetus may be noticed by listening to the heart sound carefully through the stethoscope, obviously. And by the second month of pregnancy, the fetus develop limbs and digits. So by the end of twelve weeks, that is first trimester. most of the major organ systems are formed so can we say that that in the first trimester the heart the heart and even the limbs and digits they develop can we say that the by the end of the first trimester all the major organs will form but you can even specify that in the first trimester the heart the limbs the digits they will form okay okay and then you can say that the first movement and appearance of hair again a pyq during the fifth month fifth month means second trimester so in the paper do not get confused read the question carefully are they asking the months or the sem, uh, trimester what are they asking right you need to check that okay you need to check that so body will uh, body is covered with fine hair eyelid will separate eyelashes are formed by the second semester done but it's second trimester okay okay so now answer few question then we'll start the next chapter so which uh, which of the following event is not associated with ovulation in human female which of the following event is not associated with ovulation in human male female smv definitely i'll share that in the telegram group don't worry about that jaise ectoderm ectoderm used to form the Outer skin. It used to form the central nervous system. It used to form the hair, even the retina part. Endoderm will form the inner lining. Mesoderm will form the skeletal system. It will form the muscles. Exceptions are there, but still. Release of secondary oocyte. Yes. LS surge. Yes. Fully development of graphene follicle. Obviously, but there is decrease in estradiol. No. It is not associated. The main function of mammalian corpus luteum is to produce. the main function of mammalian corpus luteum is to produce yes the main function of mammalian corpus luteum is to produce tell me quickly tell me it is progesterone okay next fertilization and implantation already done ha huh, answer this uh oh -uh. answer this question implantation is the process of 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 it is the process of attachment of blastocyst to the uterine wall Okay, so now here you can see the childbirth. The fetal ejection reflex is there. The fetus itself is going to, you know, generate that. You know, now I want to go out. Now that womb is not sufficient for me. Okay, okay. So when the fetal ejection reflex will start, na female in the mother's mother's hypothalamus and then posterior lobe of pituitary will release oxytocin. Okay, so oxytocin is also known as the. It is a major hormone for the childbirth. you know during the labor pain sometimes doctors they give the oxytocin injection to the female oxytocin is responsible because oxytocin is going to act on the smooth muscles it is going to act on the smooth muscles bachche and then there will be the vigorous contraction and relaxations of the muscles in the myometrium layer and then the child birth will be possible then so yes it is the birth hormone but which hormone decides the birth timing can you tell me that too which hormone decides the birth timing can you tell me that birth timing chalo that is also your homework so here you can see baby is going to push against the cervix causing it to stretch stretching of cervix will generate a nerve impulse 
which will send to the brain. Then brain is going to stimulate the posterior pituitary to release oxytocin. So, it is the oxytocin which is the birth hormone. Clear? Clear? Done? Okay. So, for lactation, I told you already, prolactin is the milk production, right, oxytocin is the milk ejection hormone. So, these two topics are also, the, uh, these two hormones are also important, clear, they are also important, done, chali, now answer this question, but then we will start the next chapter, which of the following is not the function of placenta, which of the following is not the function of placenta, tell me quickly, tell me quickly. Speed up. Speed up. Quick. Yes. So, here the correct answer is B, which of the following is not the function of placenta? Placenta is not going to secrete the oxytocin. It can secrete estrogen. It facilitates the supply of oxygen and nutrients to embryo. It facilitates the removal of CO2 and waste, but it is not going to secrete oxytocin during parturition. So, definitely B is the correct answer. The next question, the fetal ejection reflects in human. It triggers the release of, yes, bache. it triggers the release of the fetal ejection reflex in humans, it triggers the release of. Why should? Why D? It is so clear that it is not going to secrete oxytocin. Placenta can never. So, obviously, here the correct answer is D, oxytocin from maternal pituitary. Okay, oxytocin from maternal pituitary. Pituitary. One more question is there. Please answer it. One more question is there. Please answer it. When does lactation start? When does lactation start? And guys, the number of likes and what about the number of subscribers? If you are new to this channel, do subscribe our channel. Exactly, lactation, the milk production at the end of pregnancy. Done, bache. So, see, these are some flow charts. So, see here, GnRH inhibited by testosterone. What is it going to stimulate? Right, FSH. What is the role of FSH in the case of males? What is the role of LH in the case of males? I have added these tables for all of you, right? I will share the PDF in the Telegram group. You people will get it. So, you have to join our telegram group as well. Okay. So, see the inhibin released by Sertoli, right. So, it inhibits the secretion of FSH, even it is a PYQ. So, this table is base, basically on the basis of your previous year questions. Done, bache? It is on the basis of your previous year question. Are you getting my point? So, now the next chapter is the reproductive health. Of course, we are going to discuss the most important topics. But for that, I want to see that energy in the chat section here. But say, Wazim sir is not available. He is preparing for his marathon. Okay. So, do not spam here, please. Nine. Okay. So, any other doubt that you people are having? Yes. Any doubt that you guys are having? Doubt, doubt, doubt. Tell me. Then we will start the reproductive health. I think we should make this session as a marathon. Isn't it? We should make it as a marathon. Let us complete everything from this unit. What say? Hannah, more energy, more energy. Take it as a break for a minute. Achha, are you ready? So, see, reproductive health, you know the most important topics from this particular part, isn't it? Isn't it STI, sexually transmitted infections, contraceptive methods and art, assisted reproductive technology, the three most important topics and this chapter is not so lengthy. So, from this chapter, two to three questions can come in the NEET examination, two to three question and it is the easiest chapter, easiest chapter it is. Okay, easiest chapter it is. So, so you see to the point we are going to discuss here, STIs means sexually transmitted infections. We even call them as RTIs, reproductive tract infection. It is not right to information. 
don't take it as uh, right to information no stis means sexually transmitted infections and we even call it as reproductive tract infections okay we even call it as venereal diseases right venereal diseases so these are the disease which will spread due to the unprotected sexual intercourse if one person is affected another can also get affected like this so here the question can come that which disease are the bacterial disease which disease are the viral disease like this right like this so when you talk about the bacterial stis gonorrhea syphilis chlamydiasis is there gonorrhea syphilis chlamydiasis is there type it in the chat section gonorrhea syphilis chlamydiasis is there gonorrhea syphilis chlamydiasis is there gonorrhea nizeria gonorrhea even eyes will get infected if the mother is having gonorrhea the baby which is developing in the mother's womb that baby can have affected eyes also right and then syphilis treponema pallidum chlamydiasis chlamydia so in the viral stis the genital herpes genital warts human papilloma virus and hiv we know about it human immunodeficiency virus right so basically diseases are herpes genital warts even the aids is there in the viral stis and bachche there is protozoanal stis also trico do you remember protozoanal stis trico we have trichomonas vaginalis na protozoa trichomonas vaginalis so that trichomonas vaginalis used to cause trichomoniasis right trichomoniasis are you getting it trichomoniasis okay so here again the table is there so gonorrhea causative organism is nizeria gonorrhea which is a bacteria okay so pus discharge from penis swelling of penis and testicle in the female discharge will be there so painful sensation during sexual intercourse all that things are there okay okay so the next is syphilis treponema pallidum as i told you or uh, it can also get separated directly by direct contact with the syphilis sore okay canker formation is there this is important even it is a previous year question okay the next part the next part chlamydia trichom uh, trichomatis okay bachche so this is what you need to remember and here when it comes to the viral disease they can just ask you ki herpes is caused by ya uh, hepatitis is caused by ya aids is caused by just like that only right so genital herpes it is herpes simplex virus right bachche herpes simplex virus genital warts human papilloma virus human papilloma virus and then comes the hepatitis b hepatitis b virus it is okay hepatitis b virus it is done bachche and hiv human immunodeficiency virus that causes the aids now the question here is which diseases are not completely curable which diseases are not completely curable can you tell me which diseases are not completely curable not completely curable are i am just talking about the stis i am just talking about the sexually transmitted infections no this is not the right answer not completely curable no this is not the correct answer except warts all are non curable in viral very good akash very good akash akash is right even the see genital warts they are caused by human papilloma virus only genital wart is completely curable but if you talk about the aids if you talk about the hepatitis b virus if you talk about that herpes simplex virus they are not completely curable even it is a pyq bachche right even it is a pyq so such type of questions used to come see if you will practice last 10 years pyq na last 10 year vyq from these chapters you people will definitely get question right from these from these questions definitely same questions same questions will come in your neat 2023 exam same questions will come in your neat 2023 exam okay done okay so if you are not practicing the previous year question please start practicing it okay the next 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 now answer this question answer few question then we'll be talking about the assisted reproductive technology and at the end we'll be discussing the contraceptive method quick 
quick quick quick what is the correct answer here which of the following sexually transmitted disease is not completely curable it is not completely curable out of the following which is not completely curable definitely the answer here is genital herpes right it is caused by herpes simplex virus it is caused by herpes simplex virus herpes simplex virus right bachche done so the next which of the following sexually transmitted disease do not specifically affect the reproductive organ which disease is not specifically affect the reproductive organ quick <coughs> quick yes so of course the answer here is hepatitis b hepatitis liver and along with that aids aids is lowering uh what aids is going to do aids acquired immunodeficiency syndrome so it is a secondary immune disorder so because of it what is going to happen the immunity will come down okay the immunity will come down so obviously it is not directly affecting the reproductive organs done bachche so next is the assisted reproductive technology that is art bachche you know it very well that uh, many years back you know uh, when any couple they want to have the babies but but they are not able to so obviously generally you know people used to blame the females right so the scientists they thought ki in india it is a although such type of practices like assisted reproductive technologies they even started in the other countries like you know there is a very uh, if you will read about it now you will find like uh, there used to be one scientist who started it first in the india but he didn't get the recognition there is some story like that actually we are running out of time so now i am not i cannot tell you that story so i'll teach you up to point only right whatever is required i'll teach that only so first of all let's talk about this assisted reproductive technology you know that when a couple they are trying for a baby but they are not able to do that matlab if they are having unprotected sexual intercourse for for more than a year but still still female is not getting pregnant right still female is not getting pregnant so we can say that there is some issue any reason can be there maybe the sperm count in the case of male is less ya maybe the health of the sperm is not good maybe female is having some uh, or see female is having some issues maybe ovum is not healthy right or you can say that infertility issue is there any issue can be there right so they can visit the fertility centers there are many ways by which you can say that they can have babies so when you talk about the assisted reproductive technology we even talk about the in vitro fertilization do you know about it ivf in vitro fertilization ivf we used to call it as ha huh, ivf we used to call it as test tube baby program see the word here is ivf what is the word here the word here is ivf in vitro in vitro means outside the body means in the lab condition so in any of the assisted reproductive technology uh, in any of the assisted reproductive technology if the fertilization is outside the body if the fertilization is outside the body then we will call it as in vitro fertilization okay in vitro fertilization like we have many uh, ways na zift is there icsi is there gift is there artificial insemination is there and 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 what else intrauterine transfer is there even intrauterine insemination is there so firstly let's talk about it okay let's talk about it see firstly zift what is the meaning of zift it is zygote intra fallopian transfer definitely bachche you will get question from this part intra fallopian transfer what is it zygote intra fallopian transfer so the meaning of intra means within means within fallopian tube the zygote will be transferred isn't it within the fallopian tube the zygote will be transferred right so so zift also comes under ivf in vitro fertilization because here the zygote will be transferred within the fallopian tubes matlab fertilization is there outside the body so can you tell me up to which stage right we can implant a zygote in the fallopian tube can you tell me about that up to which cell stage we can take the zygote and we can implant it in the fallopian tube because this is also a pyq can you tell me about it anyone in the chat section anyone in the chat section up to which cell stage yes up to which cell stage we can say so embryo up to 8 blastomeres correct right so embryo when it is up to 8 blastomeres 
right we can implant it within the fallopian tube so obviously it will come under the zift and when you talk about the okay iut that is intra uterine transfer intra uterine transfer now we are transferring that embryo within the uterus okay so it should be more than 8 blastomeres it should not be up to it it should be more than 8 blastomere again it is also ivf in vitro fertilization next bache it is ici icsi icsi having maximum success rate it is intra cytoplasmic sperm injection what is it it is intra cytoplasmic sperm injection now what is happening in this case bache directly the the directly that sperm the nucleus will be right the sperm nucleus will be directly injected in the ovum so the success rate is maximum here again it is also ivf such type of questions used to come in your exam it is again ivf now when it is gift gamete intra fallopian transfer so if we are going to transfer gamete within the fallopian tube right if we are going to transfer the gametes within the fallopian tube so don't you think that fertilization will take place inside the body only right don't you think the fertilization is going to take place inside the body only guys the energy should be high see i just need your few minutes then we'll end the session don't worry about that let's discuss this topic it is important hai na hai na so here it is not the example of ivf it is not the example of in vitro fertilization but here the fertilization is inside the body so it is the in vivo fertilization it is the in vivo fertilization and when you talk about the artificial insemination let's say the male partner is having some uh, the sperm count is less yes sperms are not healthy yes some other infertility issues are there in that case female can just go for artificial insemination and when it is iui means intra uterine insemination right the sperms will be injected there in the uterus that's all okay so this is about the assisted reproductive technology i'll share the pdf with you all guys and when it is the surrogacy the surrogate mother let's say a female her gametes are fine but her uterus cannot uh, cannot help in the growth of that baby so in that case that couple can go for the surrogacy there can be another female she can be a relative or anyone else so they can implant that zygote in that female okay okay so now answer this question in case of a couple where the male is having a very low sperm count that is oligospermia bachche chenkuri it's okay i'll take one session on sexual reproduction in flowering plants in my marathon don't worry about that acha hai na hai na means means yes yes okay so yes here the answer is artificial insemination what about it the transfer of ovum collected from a donor into the fallopian tube of another female is called the transfer of ovum collected from a donor into the fallopian tube of tube of another female is called the transfer of ovum collected from a donor into the fallopian tube we are transferring the ovum into the fallopian tube basically gamete is transferred so obviously it is gift it is gift done bachche so next is the contraceptive method see contraceptive methods are the one which are going to stop the conception means which are going to avoid the pregnancy so the ideal contraceptive method is the one which is easy to use which is user friendly which is not so expensive which is not interrupting the sex drive that is libido which is reversible right which is reversible right such methods are considered as the ideal contraceptive method there are different different methods like natural methods are there barrier methods are there hormonal methods are there even there are permanent method which will result in the sterilization that is the surgery that is the surgery you know about it isn't it the vasectomy and the tubectomy vasectomy and the tubectomy don't you remember this these are the path permanent methods of sterilization vasectomy where the vas deferens will be cut and tied tubectomy where the fallopian tube will be cut and tied are you getting my point where the fallopian tube will be cut and tied so these are the permanent methods they will result in the sterilization here the reversibility rate is very 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 low right very 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 low so now what do we have to remember here see like here it is mentioned na in the ncert ideal contraceptive should be user friendly easily available effective and reversible i told you already right bachche so we need to learn that like see 
I'll teach it from the NCRT itself because the question is going to come from the NCRT. So one question, one question, IUDs. The question based on IUDs is very important. Ma'am, one doubt, vagina is homologous to Yes, 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 medical lover. Yes. Okay. So when it comes to the natural method, three methods are there. One is the periodic abscitance. It is also known as rhythm method. Right. One is the periodic abscitance. It is also known as the rhythm method. Earlier, what females used to do, they used to observe their cycle. Right? They used to observe their menstrual cycle. So, the period when they are expecting that there is no, no ovulation means at, in the periodic abscitance, couple will avoid the sexual intercourse when the female is expecting her ovulation. Right? See, it is a method in which couples will avoid or abstain from coitus. Coitus means sexual intercourse from day 10 to day 17 of the menstrual cycle. From day 10, obviously it is in the follicular phase till day 17 of the menstrual cycle because they are not expecting the ovulation at that time. Chances of fertilization are less. Secondly, withdrawal method also known as coitus interruptus. The male will not ejaculate here in the female vagina. Whenever male will have that urge to ejaculate, male will remove the male will withdraw the penis. But yes, these methods, right, these methods are not, these methods are not 110 percent success rate is very less then comes the lactation and amenorrhea lamp after the parturition right when a female is heavily lactating you can say that approximately for six months but again it is not applicable to all it is not applicable to all why is it so why is it so bache? because in this particular method now maybe that female is not heavily lactating Maybe lactation is less. So, anything can happen. So, if a female is heavily lactating, so for the six months after the childbirth, right, because prolactin is there at that time, FSH and LH is not formed, right. So, at that time, ovulation is not there. So, pregnancy cannot occur. So, the most important barrier method, the most important is the male condom. Even female condoms, femidoms are there, but here the most common is the male condom. And the very important question that used to come in the paper is male condoms, they even avoid the STDs, right? They even prevent the STDs like HIV, AIDS, right? Right? So, barrier methods are basically based on this uh, philosophy that male and female gametes should not meet, then there will be no fertilization, right? So, barrier methods, ovum and sperms are prevented from physical meeting, right? Condoms are there which are made up of sheet, thin rubber or latex sheet, right? So, it will cover the penis so that at the time of sexual intercourse, the gametes should not be released in the female vagina, right? And in the case of females, diaphragm, cervical caps and volts are there. But, but these diaphragm, these cervical caps, volts, they are reusable. Condom can be used once, but these methods are reusable. And we can make them more effective by applying the, the spermicide creams on these diaphragm, cervical cap and volts, but they are reusable. Are you getting it? Right. But they will not help in preventing these uh, STIs. Clear? They will not help in preventing. So, they are just going to block the cervix. Right. In this way, it works. Then, Bache, it is very important, the IUDs, intrauterine devices, as the word is saying, intra means within, within the uterus. Right. Within the uterus, a device like this will be inserted. Actually, this device is having the coating of the barium sulphate, which is very effective spermicide. It is even having the coating of the barium sulphate, which is a very effective spermicide. It used to destroy the sperm. So, IUD is very common. It is very uh, commonly used in rural areas of India. Okay, in the urban India, females are going for the hormonal contraceptive pills, but in the rural India, females are going for this IUDs. Okay, so the most important example here is, the most important example here is, see, but ha, for the for the insertion of these IUDs, doctors and expert nurses are required. Females should not insert it uh, by herself, okay. It is not safe, it is not safe and moreover, uh, this method is ideal for those couple who want to, you know, have a gap, th those who want to have a gap in between their two children. Okay, so here the very first is non-medicated IUD that is lip is loop. In this case, the and uh, basically in this method what is going to happen? This lip loop is going to cause some perforations in the uterus lining. Because of that blood flow will increase, even the WBCs will come there. If sperms will enter, they will destroy them. It is based on this particular principle. 
ओके एंड द मोस्ट कॉमन इज कॉपर रिलीजिंग आईओडी सो दे कैन आस्क यू द एग्जांपल्स कॉपर टी कॉपर सेवन मल्टी लोड थ्री सेवेंटी फाइव दीज आर द कॉपर रिलीजिंग आईओडीज हार्मोन रिलीजिंग आईओडीज प्रोजेस्टा सर्ड एल एन जी ट्वेंटी सो द इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम दिस पार्ट इज यू कैन सी दिस सी दिस इज द इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन सो हाउ दीज आईओडीज वॉट विल दे डू दे विल इंक्रीज द फेगोसाइटोसिस ऑफ स्पर्म विद इन द यूट्रस एंड द कॉपर आय दिस सप्रेस स्पर्म मोटिलिटी and the fertilizing capacity of sperm this suppress the sperm motility and the fertilizing capacity of the sperm are you getting it are you getting it so this is how they work then implants are there hormonal injections are there that hormonal injections are either having progesterone and estrogen in combination or they are just having the progesterone okay so that progesterone will you know give a fake signal to the brain to the pituitary that there is no need for fsh and lh you please do not secrete it no ovulation will be there and in this way pregnancy will be avoided right bachche right so these are few method that you need to revise now answer the question so today we will discuss these two chapters only for sexual reproduction in flowering plant i'll take another session or i will complete that in the marathon or with the help of pyqs as i said whatever we are going to tell you we will fulfill it don't worry about that so as of now just answer this question because even you people are attending the session from so long i think from 11 in the morning so you need some rest also we'll cover it don't worry about that okay so yes the correct answer here is the this suppress the sperm motility and the fertilizing capacity of the sperms right bachche so pdf will be provided to you don't worry right pdf will be provided to you but do like do share this channel and please let me know in the comment section you liked it or not okay how was the session and what else do you want before your need 2023 done so thank you so much for your time thank you so much for the love and uh, yes please do like this channel do like this video and do subscribe our channel and we are really really grateful for the support that you people have given us okay thank you